So hello, my name is Jason Samagnus from Little Pine First Nation, Saskatchewan. And I am Blair Kanger from Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to our store. This is uh, Elf Angels Creations, Native American Spiritual Services. We're at Unit B1, 5012 46th Street in the basement of the building. So our main attraction that everyone goes for is usually the, the sage, and that's over here. So there's many different types of sages. They all do something different. Um, Vanna White. <laughs> Just kidding. So a lot of times when people come in and they say they want uh, sage for a certain reason, we always ask them what type of sage. Um, and then with the second question we always ask is why do, you, do they need it? Um, so they, they, a lot of people, they don't understand that, um, well, they don't know, I should say. They don't know that there's many different types of sages out there and many different types of smudges. So we have like a quick go-to guide here. Most of them are sold out at the moment. Um, so they're just going to be restocked. But yeah, we get them from all over uh, Canada and United States. Yeah, for example, white sage is from uh, United States, from California. That's what a lot of people use. That's not the sage that grows in Canada. So we have pasture sage or prairie sage. Well, this one's pasture sage. But there's prairie sage that grows in Canada. That's more Canadian. I know you see. <laughs> Another thing too we want to point out is that some people have allergies to the California sage because it's not doesn't grow native in our area. So when people burn it, um, they may get like um, like uh, flu, um, coughs and um, sneezing and all that stuff. Allergies, but so we always tell them like if try the uh, local sage, like either the prairie sage or the pasture sage or even the grandmother sage. I'm gonna grab it, the silver sagebrush. So in Saskatchewan, we have three different types of sages that grow here. So the prairie sage, the pasture sage, and the silver sage brush. So the silver sage brush, um, I think we only have the stems. Um, smudge bundles is sold out. Um, usually for every province, they ha usually have four sages, um, four medicines that grow. For example, four sages. So this would be the fourth in Saskatchewan, but this is a sage's cousin called Wormwood. Wormwood looks very similar to sage. It smells different and it has different properties, but wormwood is really good to use um, when you want to have sickness away from your house. So you want to hang wormwood above your windows or your doors. Another uh, go-to thing we do is candles. For example here, so say if a man is sick, we always recommend the Apollo candle. So these candles, we um, do the write-ups and all that stuff. For every candle, it explains about the colors, the crystals, the herbs, sacred animals and a bit about what the, the god or goddess does and how to use the candle. When women are sick, for example, we always recommend the Artemis. So the Artemis candles go pretty fast as well too, especially with sickness going around. So same idea, it has all the information needed. Say if a person wants protection for their home, um, there's a couple of them that we recommend, but a black candle, for instance, is really good for banishing negative energy, um, for bringing protection as well as physical protection for a person. And another one people always ask about is love. So there's two different kinds of love we always tell people. So we always tell people, what kind of love are you looking for? Like a, a lustful kind of love, so go with red. And then there's a friendship kind of love, go with pink. So there's also Aphrodite, candle for love. Um, oh, a person bought it and they, I think it was the love one. I think they bought for love and say, and they said it really works. So we carry different types of candles. So these are all the pillar candles. So we have them labeled now unscented and uh, all the pillar candles are unscented. Um, we rearranged this recently here. We have scented candles that are in votive style and tea, uh, tea light candles. And we also have unscented. So what we basically did with um, the votive candles is we put the information on each candle. So that way it makes it easier. But um, these little go-to quick guides, we also give these out to people that when they buy a candle um, and it explains about the different types of candles, how the, um, how the candle is used. I like scented ones. So probably the, probably this black one because it's sandalwood. And black candles are hard to find. I, I like scented stuff. I don't mind the unscented either. I like the black one because the, the, there's a lot of things. And this one smells like sandalwood. 
So my go-to favorite one I'm, I like to use again is a black candle. The reason for that, because like Blair said that uh, black candles are getting harder to find. Uh, we sell our, these guys for $8 online uh, during COVID with prices going up and all that stuff. For the exact same candle, it was $25 a candle. And that was the discount price online. Just for a plain black candle, it was $25. So now we got lucky and we found a few over uh, over the, um, the few months. And uh, we were able to bring them to the store. And um, so when people, you know, compare prices, I said, like, if you go online, depending on the website, sometimes it'll show that these are $25 just for one candle. So, Especially in the glass. So, yeah. So now that we know how special it is, it became my most favorite. For the God and Goddess candles, um, one of my favorites that I like to use is Freya. Um, she's a goddess of love, fortune telling, gold, um, just a couple of things. But because I do a lot of readings and all that stuff, I like using Freya. Um, she's like my go-to goddess. And um, like I said, with every candle, it explains about all the spiritual details here, like the colors, the crystals, herbs, and sacred animals, sacred to that god or goddess. And, oh yeah, sprays. Another big thing we're, we're big on here is sprays. So we have different herbal sprays um, from A to Z, um, and they all do something different for the for the person, for the body, um, for their energy. So the quickest way, like say if somebody comes in and they're like, I'm dealing with, uh, I need luck in my life. So we go on, a, go on our website, we type in luck, and then all the items that for luck will show up on the website. So for sprays, it'll recommend that the person could use orange. Or say if they're allergic to orange, they have another example of what they could use. Well, I like this one. Well, here's the black black pepper spray. I like to smell that way. <laughs> you may you may think it smells gross, but it doesn't. So it's good for like to help to release negative emotions, helps like protection, encourage like um, emotional strength and clear energy blockage, and also helps with protection. Which one's your favorite, Jason? Okay. I have a couple of favorites. So one of my go-to favorite is sold. Ah, oh, here it is. Sorry, lemon. Mm -hmm. Lemon is like my go-to favorite. Um, lemon is uh, works with friendship, longevity. Um, so longevity means like you want to live longer, or say if someone is sick, um, and you want to increase their health. So that's a part of longevity. Um, helps with love and purification. So in places that um, say you can't smudge somewhere. I was going to show you guys the sweetgrass and the sage one, but they're sold out. They're very popular. So say if there's a place where you can't smudge in an area like a smoke smudge, you could always use a purification spray like uh, lemon or one of these other ones and um, spray it in the area like the hotels and stuff like that is an example where you can't smudge in there. And then you're still getting the benefits of purifying the area. Okay, so we sell mosqu mosquito and tick spray, well, the same the same thing. But well, we used to sell as tick spray. So there's, we have, what was it, 10 different scent? Well, we have different scent ones that we, that we make ourselves. So you just spray when you need to use it. Then we have like the, and I, and I made this one, it's the aura protection spray. So like place where you can't smudge to and to help clear your aura and helps protect protect you. Then we got some, and they come in. How many scents? One, two, three. I think they come in four different scents or five. There's only three right here now. Then we got some chakra sprays that, J that Jason developed. Then I, then I started these ones after. These are all natural. It's all and natural. There's no chemical free. There's no like that deep depth. Deep. There's no chemicals in it. Cause it's just simple ingredients. More organic than mm -hmm. the ones you buy in the store. Better, better for your skin. Um, for also in house, we make our own ointments for different reasons. Um, so we have uh, arnica, blue spruce, common plantain, jack pine, juniper. Um, what's missing here? Prairie rose, prairie sage, red spruce, wild bergamot, and yarrow. So these are sold across Canada. Um, there's a couple stores that carry them across Saskatchewan and Alberta. And um, yeah, they're very popular. They're, uh, a lot of people ask us for 
um, bear grease. But the thing with bear grease is that if a person has bear grease and they put it on their skin, it could actually burn their skin or cause an allergic reaction, depending on what the bear is eating and depending on where the bear was harvested and how it was harvested, if it was done traditionally or not. So we went to the ceremony and they told us not to use bear grease, but to use herbal medicines in regards to people's skin and that way they don't have a reaction. And we do put the ingredients, like what's all in it. And for all the labels, it also says here, discontinue use if irritation occurs. The most popular ones are for psoriasis and eczema. So a lot of people go with the blue spruce that gets sold out really fast. There's three top ones here. So blue spruce gets sold out fast. The peri rose here gets sold out fast as well too. It helps with eczema and psoriasis. And jack pine. So jack pine was the first ointment that we started off with. Um, was that five years ago? And uh, when we created jack pine, it's because I had arthritis and then I, I took different pills and things like that and different creams and nothing worked. So I ended up making them my own, um, which was a jack pine ointment and it worked instantly within a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on the condition. And um, yeah, so mine worked within a few seconds and uh, yeah, to this day, I don't have arthritis now. Like I'm good to go. So after that, yeah, I gave it to elders and then people started wanting more and more and more. So I said, I'm going to have to start charging people for it because uh, I can't just give it out for free anymore. So at that time, they said, okay, I'll pay for it. So they started giving me donations. And uh, so we started, um, you know, selling it as a product. And then um, it became from one item to another item to another. And it just kept growing. And it's still growing to this day. Um, we'll be having different ointments um, throughout, the, throughout the years. We also make our own oils for different situations. So um, these are mostly our anointing oils. So with the anointing oils, we'll say like money oil. So money oil, for example, you want to put a drop or two um, in your doorways, in your windows, your house, basically wherever it is you need money. Um, you could always add it to your candles as well too when you're manifesting. Um, you want to be fire safe as, as usual. Um, there's also protection oil. The next one that's coming is a banishing oil. And these are also different um, spiritual oils here, or they're also used for medicinal purposes. Um, so those are, you know, are going to be growing more in time. We also make our own spiritual salts. So for every spiritual salt, you want to sprinkle this around your home, around your area or your vehicle or your office. So this green salt here helps with money. There's more than one different types, but the, most of them are sold out. And we have this black, black salt that's very popular. It's good for protection with like negative energies, ghosts, vanishing, good for Halloween, put around your, your yard, keep the ghost away. Then we, then we, um, we just developed these new bath salts. So for, there was frankincense. That smells really good. Let's put in your bath water. The, the sweet grass one is the popular one and it actually smells so good. You know, like... And there's sage. Yeah, and there's sage. That one smells good. Well, they all smell good. And then we had these other ones first. So we have one for like, if you're like, you need to relax when your kids are stressing you out, you go bath and you got, and we have so ones when you have sore muscles, ones that help you sleep. Oh, he said relax. This one helps with stress. This one with colds and flu. Then one. Helps to clear, clear the mind when it's when you're thinking too much. So, for example, um, like for Ooh. the protocols of oh, the uh, medicines. So tr traditionally, uh, we're always told that not to sell medicines. And when before we started, um, because for years I started, I just collected herbs for my personal collection for years. And um, I went into ceremony and they told me like I have jars and jars of herbs, like oh, shelves yes, of it. Does. And then they said uh, the medicines can't just sit there; they have to be used. And I said, well, you know, it just became a hobby. Like I just, you know, started getting medicines or whatever, cause I'm really interested in it. And uh, long story short, so I went to the ceremony. I said, well, so what can I do with these medicines? I can't just throw them away. And I tried to give them away, but nobody knew how to use them. So I said that, well, we're gonna be opening up a store and we want herbal medicines to be a big part of it. And they said there that what you guys can do, what we're granted permission in the ceremony from the spirits and the elders, they told us that you guys can distribute the medicines to people. Um, and the money you guys make has to go back to ceremony. So it has to go back to buying tobacco, cloth, 
um, paying elders, um, the gas, of course, um, and all that stuff needed, and buying food for the gro uh, for the ceremonies. So that's where the money goes, the proceeds go to that. So since COVID, um, a lot of reserves and communities, you know, asked us to um, provide them with certain medicines that'll help fight the COVID-19 virus. Um, so for example, the wild bergamot here um, is one of the ingredients that is used in uh, a tea that helps to fight the COVID virus. Yeah, yeah when, and when we do pick, we do pick with protocol. Yeah, but we try to pick. Sometimes we, well, some herbs we have that we don't pick because it doesn't even grow in Canada. Like, um, uh, what is it? Like Asha Garanda. I can't speak that word. Like, um, Bailey, for example. So that one doesn't grow in Canada. I don't think it does. <laughs> Greece. <laughs> yeah. So that's when we we have to order some of them, but but we we try to pick when we can. So the next step that in our um, thing that we have the information that we want to add here is the location of where each medicine grows. Um, some mm -hmm. packages do have it, some don't. Oh, like for example, white pine needles here. It says it grows in Canada and United States, and it gives you more details of where in the United States it grows and where in Canada it grows. So we're becoming more detailed on, um, on the packaging. The older packages don't have the location of where the plant grows, but the new packaging does have the location. So that way people are like, well, which ones go around Saskatchewan? And it'll, to it'll show you exactly which plants grow around here. Yeah, we, as you can see, we sell a lot of incense. We sell uh, a million. Just kidding. So there's one that helps like, like we have ones that, the ones that have names on them, they're like the herbal ones. And then we have zodiac sign, zodiac sign ones. And we have resin. And we got backflow incense. And these ones you put, oops, not that one. I want you to put an incense stick here and just close it and it comes out of here. And then you can put the, um, the cone cones. Yeah. Cones in here. <laughs> and then we got, and we got feathers you can use for when you, sm when you smudge with, when you, when you smudge. So we got like ostrich feathers and we got goose, goose feathers, like a different one. And then we got, Macaw, macaw peacock feathers. Yeah, it looks so cool. We got a lot of crystals. We even have a unicorn, unicorn, um, gray, gray agate with druzy in it. We had these for a long time. They look so cool. And they, and these ones come with a stack. So the uh, crystals here, they come from all over the world. Um, if there's a crystal we don't have, it's because a crystal is going up in price. Um, so a lot of them are the most common crystals. Um, what our goal is in the future for Lloyd Minster and area anyways, is we once we expand the store, we want to have more crystals than this. So we want to have another table or a shelf even of crystals. Because um, there's way more than this. But one of our goals is we want to have the most crystals of Lloyd Minster and area. So, so far we have a lot of the hard to get crystals for example, K2. <laughs> like, K oh. like K2, that one's, well, I don't think a lot of people have K2 in Lloyd. What's the significance of crystals? So crystals, they, they do, they help with like healing, protection, shielding, um, EM, they protect you from EM EMF. And some people just like them because they look cool. Grieving. They help with grieving. Um, you can look at the posters if you can't remember. Yeah, you can use it for like manifesting or uh, or retrograde. Yeah. <laughs> it can help with like communication when you're shy. Tortella agate. So That's it's nail fossils. They help with like when you're traveling, so it protects you from travel. It helps you from traveling, so when you're on the road lots, and it helps with like healing, and love, gardening, helps to be courage. And another one was that we used to have was terahertz. That one was a cool one. 
But that, oh yeah, we have ones that are real crystals and we have some that are man-made. Hmm. And we have raw form. And then we, see this one's a, uh, see the, See this black kyanite is is a raw form. It's very you have to be careful because it's it can chip real easy. This one helps with protection. And where's this um, 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 shungite? They they you can put this in your water shungite and it'll help purify it, get the toxins out. And the and then the patchy tear helps with like when you're grieving. This this is also another black one. The patchy tear that helps with like grieving. There's like a whole story about it. What's your What's your favorite? Uh, my favorite is the labradorite, like carnelian. So the labradorite is my favorite crystal. The reason for that is the story behind it. So um, I'll just read it here. So the legend says that the lights of the Aurora Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights were trapped inside rocks along the coast of Labrador in Canada, until one day Inuit warrior came and struck the rock and is with his spear to free them. Since that day, the Labradorite was created. Yeah, so when you're working with uh, spirit energy or people that passed on, especially if you're a medium, um, Labradorite is really powerful for that because um, it's believed that the Northern Lights are the are spirit guides, the people who passed on. So when the Northern Lights are dancing, it's, uh, it's like a ritual where the spirits are all dancing in the spirit world. So we're physically able to see it when the Northern Lights are dancing. So the Northern Lights, um, their crystal is the Labradorite. So when we work with Labradorite, we're also working with spirit energy. Another cool crystal that comes from all over the world is, uh, is a Holy Stone. This one thing came from Ireland. They have this, this, these ones, so said to believe, if you look through the hole, you can see it like the fairy world. Or spirits. Or spirits. And they're and it's made by the river. The the holes are not man made, but you could. But these ones aren't. <laughs> Tough enough. And here's some more crystals like towers. So this one, some people call these both selenite, but this one's the the satin bar. This one's the real selenite. So it looks more clear. So you can use it to. I don't have like the book, but they come in different. The selenite comes in different forms. They come like in a long rod like this or like this. So it's like a charging plate. Or then if you don't want like, um, like if you have negative friends or negative energies on you, you can just swipe around around you before you go meet meet your friends you don't like or if you're going public. <laughs> you just go like this and it'll like clear the energy. These are very, they're, run at a very high vibration so any low en energies will like they won't go around you it's a charging. so a charging so like 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 it's like for your crystals though so if you grab like like you can, like put your crystals on it and it'll like, clear the energy on it like if you use it some so you're supposed to clear them like every every month like, so you can use like a full moon or cell night so it'll play the energies and um clear the energy so it can um and um do it do what's supposed to do and clear out like the bad stuff that get collected over the time recharge crystals yeah so that's why i say what recharge means yeah or you can use the like on that's not be crystals it could be like a bracelet it could be like earrings doesn't even have to be a crystal, it can just be anything. Yeah, you have to keep away from water because it'll dissolve. But the one that dissolves quicker than this would be the uh, Himalayan salt. It dissolves faster. Yeah, I think this one will de deteriorate slowly. You gotta keep away from salt too, I think. Every morning, we, uh, when we light the candles, we ask that the spirits that are lost you know, come to the store um, and bring their families to come get healed. Or if they're missing and murdered, we ask that uh, the families again come forward and let us help the families, you know, find uh, their loved ones. So that's, that's what these represent. And here's a money altar. So it helps with us or with people that are having money problems. The eggs were, uh, were eggs are supposed to be for Easter, but they end up they represent uh, fertility to make yep. your finances fertile. 
Yeah, I'm going to flourish. And this altar here is just uh, for people that want to do offerings. So I'll just do a quick demo of the, my sound healing. I use the seven singing, singing bowls, seven chakra bowls. So the first one is the crown. This is the third eye. And this one's the throat. Then the solar plex. And the Seiko chakra. And this is the singing pyramid. I'll do a little. Well, it just clears the. Well, they all do. That one helps clear the chakras, and this one just clears the whole body. I had two, but one broke. So you, Depends where you hit it, they... You can choose, choose whichever feather you're drawn to the most. Oh man, this one. Oh, okay. Because for every feather, there is a different spirit. But um, like this one here is a pigeon feather. Um, has And these are goose. But the, each color has a different meaning. The spirit of the Canada goose. The spirit of the Canada goose is going to guide you through the process here. And whenever you use any feather, you're calling upon any spirit animal. Any bird spirit animal. So say, for instance, you wanted to talk to the eagle, the eagle will work with the spirit of the Canada goose and then give you a reading at the same time. So I'll get you to hold that and just say your own prayer in your own way and think about your questions. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and ask your questions now and I'll just write down notes as I talk. Uh, where... Am I supposed to go professionally? Like how, what path should I follow in terms of my career? So they're giving me a couple of words right away. They're saying film definitely right now. Um, they're talking about travel. They're talking about the North. Um, they're saying that you have to go back home. Um, I was putting brackets home and bring some of the services to your community as well. Um, you know, that's definitely needed. Um, they're saying to emphasize the indigenous part of it, um, indigenous stories, obviously. Um, 
they're talking about here ceremony as well too and now i have to ask you they're asking me to ask you when is the last time you went into ceremony oh man like um more than just smudging and yeah oh yeah i don't remember okay it's been a long long time because they're saying here that to go into ceremony and they're saying you're gonna need cleansing so i'll do that today as well later on um, like I'll cleanse you as much as I can, but I always recommend to everybody try to get cleansed at least once a month um, Depending if you're like super busy if you're around a lot of people all the time Then you have to do it like for me for instance I always do readings and healings throughout the week So I have to get cleansed at least once a weekend once a week um, For anybody else it's like once a month kind of thing because we always absorb different energies From different people places and things and our skin is like a sponge So whenever we absorb energy, we're always absorbing other people's energy in us um so your spirit guides are saying here that um, you definitely need a cleansing. They're going to guide you along the ways. And I forgot to mention, uh, you need to work with the Canada Goose as well, because that's your spirit animal that came in today. And that um, spirit animal has certain messages as well. But I have it written on a separate pamphlet that the Canada Goose has certain properties and things like that. So I'll give you that pamphlet today. Um, but definitely community is one of them, um, and conservation. So conserving your energy, conserving the culture. Um, that's the other thing I got, forgot to mention is culture. Um, and family is popping up too. So I'm going to ask why they're mentioning family. Is it in a positive or negative um, connotation? They're saying it's positive, but they're definitely saying there's other family members here that, um, there's, so there's two situations. So there's people that passed on that are trying to communicate with you. And there's people that are alive right now and their energies, they're, they want to communicate with you at the same time. Um, they're telling you to... Um, okay, this is interesting. So they're telling you here to contact the family as well too, that there's something that they want to talk to you about. Um, those are part of living relatives. Um... Now, the deceased relatives are talking about your future here. So this is a private matter. I don't know if you want me to bring it up now or after. No, it's okay. Okay. They're saying there's going to be a child in a future coming, um, a little boy. And um, they're saying here that's, that's something that they want to relate to in a future. Um, but there's definitely a child coming in a future. And he's going to be a little boy. Um, and uh, they're saying here that's one thing that they're they're giving you as well. It would be my child. Yeah. Yeah, your child. And um, that's something that the family also wants as well, too. They want the next generation to continue kind of thing. Um, so that's kind of like what the family wishes of you kind of thing as well, too. But your immediate family right now definitely wants you to contact them um, for some reason. Um, that they have something to say or they, they want to do touch base with you. Um, but they definitely want you to contact them in some way, somehow. Now, the other thing interesting about this um, baby boy is that this baby boy in a future has a chance to be a healer as well. Because he didn't come here for nothing. And... Uh, it's very interesting because this baby boy, his spirit is in a spirit world right now, but this baby boy's spirit is saying that he's the one that brought you over here um, for me to give you that message. So I find that very interesting how that um, that baby boy is saying that, and he's saying in regards to ceremony, in regards to culture and all that, that what this boy is requesting from you, your son, is he's requesting that you go into ceremony and learn what you can. Um, and in the future, um, when the baby is grown up, um, take him to ceremonies and take him to cultural events and things like that and help him learn the process of it because that's what he's meant to learn and um, that's going to be a part of his healing journey and in return when he's older and old enough he's going to become the healer himself um, the next generational healer so it's really cool how that's how that that is so the baby well, he's not born boy. yet uh, yeah but uh wants me to learn how to heal yeah, to once you, yeah, them how to heal. yeah, or to be in contact with healers, culture, language, things like that, um, because that's what that boy is requesting from you in the future, um, to keep that part of life within, within you, 
and that boy is going to be the healer in a future because um in a future you're going to be taking your son to a healer a person who's um you know older at this point and you're gonna and that healer is going to be teaching your son healing methods and things like that and many different healers many different teachers along his journey and then he'll be in return when he's old enough and when he's ready he'll be doing the healing on other people yeah so it's really cool they're giving me a few words. There's a late grandmother that's coming through here. Um, she is on your mom's side of the family. And she said there's another one as well, too. Um, so the one that's on your mom's side of the family, she is saying that she supports you in everything you do. Um, she's very loving, very kind. She's not giving me a name or anything right now. Um because that's a separate reading in itself, the mediumship reading. But she's saying here that she's with you at all times. And then she's saying here, don't worry about anything, that she is guiding you through this process. Because what happens when we lose our maternal side of our uh, our connection with our mothers, biological mothers and grandmothers and so forth, especially in our cultures, is we lose that, that certain connection to ourself as well too. So um, in this way here, she's saying, even though you're not you know, physically connected with your biological mother she's saying spiritually the grandmother is taking that place kind of thing um and um the uh the other grandmother your dad said of the family she's kind of laughing and she's almost like a joke and she's saying here that um you feel like you're you're colonialized too much at the same time and she's saying here that's your biggest issue like a personal issue within yourself and um, she said, stop blaming yourself. She's saying it's not your fault. Um, she said if things were different, you know, back in the day, um, you know, it would have been a lot different now. You would have grew up in a culture and language and things like that, like deeply. But she's saying here, a lot of it, um, the colonialism is what's blocking you. So you're, you're like here and then you want to learn there, but then you're like, you're not pushing through. You're You're kind of blaming yourself that I can't or I don't know how. And then instinctively and you know in your blood you know exactly what to do what to, um the steps needed but that's where they said that other healers and um guidance and things like that are, are going to be taking place to help guide you along, along your ways that's why they said you didn't come here for nothing um now they're also asking you here to uh, make a tobacco offering as well um to the spirit of the goose um so that's a tobacco offering ceremony so that is a little mission that they're putting you on and try and get that done within four days um, so try to get it done before Tuesday because Tuesday is a, a different moon phase. Um, but during this moon phase right now, you have to get it done. So you're, oh, we're actually starting it today. So astrology wise, we are going into the waxing crescent right now. So the waxing crescent is let go of plans and dreams and grow and tap into the moon's well, well of forwarding, forwarding, moving power to help you. So this moon phase that we're in right now is... Oh, so four days. So four days and four nights we're in this moon phase right now, the waxing crescent. So during this waxing crescent moon phase, I'm just going to write that down. Um, you definitely want to, you know, do that ceremony. Um, what else are they saying here? Um, oh yeah, tobacco offering ceremony. And then say thank you to the Canada Goose for giving you this guidance. And then when you notice that the Goose, um, will come into your life more and more, like, um, what I would suggest for you is, like, these are Goose feathers. Um, there's different kinds that we carry. Um, every color does something different. Um, I don't have all of them here right now, but these are just examples. But every color does something different. And again, that pamphlet I'm going to show you, um, explains about... The Canada goose and then um, and then the goose I assumed is a Canada goose but it um, explains about each color what each color does and whatever color you're drawn to the most that's what color is needed at the most so they're asking you to work with a feather um, so when you do your smudging and things like that um, that Canada goose is going to be guiding you through the process we do have the natural goose feathers they're just not out yet um, they're still in the bag but um, yeah we can talk about that later um, Oh, and they're also saying here too that um, try and have like a, at home or where your space is or office or whichever, try have a, 
a symbol of the Canada goose. So it could be like a picture, it could be like a statue, you know, something like that uh, represents the goose, could be a candle holder, you name it. Um, because that goose spirit is going to be working with you, but you need a physical representation so that you're not forgetting. So say if you're in a, your office or home or whatever, um, you know, and then you'll have different spirit guides throughout your lifetime, but the goose is the one that's going to be very prevalent with you. Um, now he's kind of teasing here and he's saying here that don't eat my people. <laughs> he's kind of teasing. Um, but then, uh, yeah, they're saying here that, um, you know, if you ever get sick in the future, um, and if you're a meat eater, uh, eating the goose meat would be fine. It's not considered cannibalism, but it is fine. And they're saying that the meat is going to help heal your body as well. So that's the medicine you're given. Um, and then it relates to your people as well, too. Um, so I'm sure there's a story about the Canada goose within your culture. Um, so definitely look into that as well, too. So I'm just going to put here the um, goose traditional stories. I do have two more quick questions. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about academics or school or a book? Um, they're saying right right now you're too busy. They're saying here that when the time comes, do it. Um, they're saying the only thing there in the future that they're talking about what is possibly going to hold you back during that process is that to say if the baby comes first, you know, say if the baby, you know, the wife that you choose is pregnant, um, and then that's what's going to hold you back because the baby's, you know, life is more important that time. But they're saying here that if you choose schooling before then, that's totally fine. Um, you know, the baby will come when the baby needs to be here kind of thing. Um, but they're saying here that in regards to back to the baby, the baby's going to be healthy and all that, um, so that you don't have to worry about that. Um, but they're saying here that do what you need to do first before you become a father. Um, and, um, uh, that sounds kind of selfish, but they're saying here that this baby prefers it that way. This, that's why this baby said, I'm not rushing you. Um, I'll come when I need to be there. Um, into this world, but they're saying you, you know, get what you need to get done first in regards to schooling and things like that. Um, that's why they mentioned travel there as well, too, because um, I don't see much travel to the south as much, um, but definitely to the north. Um, and like I said, your home community there definitely wants to honor you in some way, somehow. They want to get to know you. They want to help you on your journey as well, too. Um, you know, you have to pick and choose whoever you're going to go to, obviously. Um, but they're saying here that um, because of your job in filming and all that stuff, you need to look into the indigenous culture and in into the stories, the traditional stories and all that. Because when you, you know, well, say if you put it on air, um, the there's going to be people that are lost as well too. People that don't that don't know their culture or that they don't know the language or don't know where to go to elders, things like that. So when they see it on on television, they'll be like, it'll be their their go-to situation, it'll be, it'll give them hope, you know, and that re spark to get to know themselves again and their culture and to know that they're not lost because your grandmothers are saying here too, that if you had a choice in your past, if you were a child and you've seen an elder or a traditional person on TV, um, or well, there's no internet back then, but if you've seen that kind, it would spark an interest in you to get to know who you are, your culture and things like that. Um, so that's what they're they're mentioning there and they're saying that's why that's the way the world is nowadays with television and internet and all that stuff but they're saying here that that's why it's important to go back even if it's just for one day one interview whichever um but the um i forgot to write here four days and four nights um yeah but they want you to um to do that as well and what was your next question uh so not, nothing about a book? Too busy? Um, they're saying here with the book, they're saying here that you need to take time because you're not taking enough time to do it. And, um, you know, I was I said the same thing years ago that I was going to write this book and I didn't, you know, I was doing it. And then um, my personal advice to you is make sure you have a backup because at the time I didn't have a backup and then the computer broke and all the, the information got, got uh, deleted because the motherboard fried. And then uh, I was writing about spiritual stuff in there. So depending on the subject, um, what that was told after, because I was writing about spiritual stuff, is that they say you have to smudge your hands. So this is a smudge pan. So that you have to smudge your hands like this, and then, you know, smudge yourself kind of thing. And then um, let the spirit, your spirit guides know that you're writing, um, you know, the book kind of thing um, on whatever subject you're gonna be doing. 
and then um that way too like um as you smudge room and things like that it becomes a sacred space so when you're doing your work you're able to concentrate you're able to focus and then um you know hopefully that hopefully you have a backup by then so that if the computer does break in the future um because when i was doing the book myself i didn't do any of the ceremony part of it and i was talking about ceremony i was talking about spiritualism and because i'm the, I was told through ceremony and through the elders that the computer broke is because the world wasn't ready for the information. So that's why the book uh, got destroyed in that process. Um, but they said that now that you know I was given that advice I just gave you, they said that um, whenever you're ready, the spirits will talk to you and they'll guide you through that process as you're you know getting ideas and inspiration and things like that. And that'll flow through your hands into the into your writing. So that's what they're saying here. That book that you're going to be creating, or books, I should say, um, is going to become sacred in itself as well, too, because the information needs to be told. Did you say books? Yeah. Did I say yeah. more than one? Yeah, yeah. That's why I said it could be a book, but then, you know, um, people always just think that's going to be one, but there's usually more. Um, depending on your inspiration and all that stuff. But um, I know for myself, I just said I was just going to do a book. And then when I started talking to other healers and all that, they started seeing visions and so forth. And then the vision I was given is that there's going to be a series of books, more than one subject, because I just thought I can just do everything in one book. And, um, you know, say if I'm talking about feather magic, and then it's just going to be like one chapter, but people are going to want more information on it. So that's where the other series of books will start taking place. Um, and that's what they're saying here with you, like on uh, whatever subject you choose, it's going to be like a general idea, but people are going to eventually want more. They're going to want more in depth about, you know, whatever subject you're, you're talking about. And you as a writer, that's going to be totally up to you if you're going to go that far or if you're going to be just, you know, taking a break in that process. Now the uh, goose here says he has to go soon because um, he's looking back and he's saying here that another spirit wants to take over and talk. Um, he's asking if you have any questions before he leaves. Uh, am I on the right path currently? He said yes. Um, he said in a future, he said that when you decide to get another reading, he's suggesting that you go with the card readings, um, whichever you're drawn to at that moment and he's also suggesting here too that you go with a mediumship reading because that's something that um that keeps coming through is because your grandmothers are able to talk today but there's other spirit guides that are standing around you um that are in this room right now and uh, whenever the spirits come in the, the room heats up so if you're finding it's starting to get warm it's because there's a lot of people in here and those family members there they have something to say and there's they're saying here they want to go more in depth in private with you about your family history about where you came from and about um you know the culture things like that um they said right now they can't talk about it because um it's the goose's you know main main uh reading right now but um they're saying here that it's totally up to you if you want to come back for that but they're saying here that um that's something that they suggest for you now the reason why they're saying cards is because um, with the cards you get the pictures and things like that like there's an example of one um, and um, that way when you're when you're getting the reading and stuff like that done it's like you're a visual learner you 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 at some point you want to see what's in front of you kind of thing um, during the reading process so that's what they're saying that they suggest that for you so I'm gonna write that down here um, just as um, for the future so there's like the medium one mediumship reading and a card reading so they're not specifying which card reading if it's going to be oracle or tarot but they're definitely asking you to um, choose whatever you're drawn to the most in that way they said it's up to you but they're saying here that these are going to be um, future future discussions that um, they want to talk to you about, um, like your spirit guides want to talk to you about, especially the mediumship reading. Um, that's what they're mentioning there. And uh, your grandmothers are saying here that they're, they're going now, but they're saying that we'll be back when the time when the mediumship reading starts. And that's when they're going to come back and give you more information. And they're saying here that um, a father figure, because they're saying you're... This is this is what I find kind of strange because they're saying your dad is is here or a father figure or an uncle or something like that. But they're saying he's here right now, too. He's not saying nothing because he's not allowed to. But he's saying that he's going to show up during the mediumship part. Um, 
So I'm just going to put here as a side note, um, father figure. Because I don't know if your dad's alive or not, but um, I assume he is. But yeah, there's a father figure that's coming through as well. Who is the, or, uh, who is the next spirit besides the, the goose that was... Um, so that is a grandmother spirit, so that's to do with her. So whenever we do a tea leaf reading, um, there's always a grandmother spirit that comes in. Um, in Cree, we call her Nontekwatogan, which means, um, like, she's like the, um, like, well, say here's a medicine wheel, for example. Oh, here's a perfect one. Here's a medicine wheel, for example. So on this side of the, like, here, how can I put it? I'll just do it this way. It's easier. I'll just do it as an X. So here you have the east, you have the south, you have the west, and you have the north. So the grandmother spirit sits here in southeast direction. And that's the one that's going to be doing, um, that comes in when we do the tea leaf reading. Um, for you, the west, um, for the west, I mean, sorry. Um, the goose, the goose can sit anywhere, but usually the goose sits between the south and the um, west and the um, south. But mainly the south part, because you know when the geese fly to the south kind of thing, because of winter and all that? And then depending on a season, it can even be a spirit of the north, it could be a spirit of the west or a spirit of the east. But in this case here, it's talking about he's kind of in between um, because, um, you know, like here we start with the east and all that. And he's kind of in between. So when the winter starts to come forward, he'll be going to the south and that's where he becomes a south spirit. They're saying here that like his job is done, um, you know, giving you the guidance needed uh, kind of thing. And especially, he's really emphasizing do that tobacco ceremony with the spirit of the goose, like on your own, um, within the 48 of four nights. Um, the other spirits that are like the family, like the people who passed on kind of thing, they are gone. They had to leave. But they're saying there's other spirits that want to come in as well to, you know, talk about what they need to talk about. Um, and the reason why they're saying that is because the, it's not, the information is not for you. It's for her. Like that's the grandmother spirit. And the other people that are coming, um, their spirit guides are already here. So that's what I mean. There's a lot of spirits here today. Um, and then there's possibly another client tonight or tomorrow. Um, and then that person's spirit guides are coming. So it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, these, it's like a waiting room, you know, of spirits kind of thing. And then they're all waiting their turn to talk. Um, but physically, we're not there yet. But they tell me ahead of time that, um, you know, that... Um, it's kind of like there are people in waiting kind of thing, like in a lineup. It's the best way to describe it. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you have any last more questions? Is there any other birds or just the goose? Um, right now, it's just the goose. Um, like there's going to be other birds in your lifetime kind of thing. But the, um, the goose is the one that's most prevalent right now. Because um, you could have like, for example, you could have 100 birds um, in your lifetime, you know, that are guiding you. But um, certain animals will, will guide you through a process and some animals will stay with you for the rest of your life um, since the day you are born. And some will say like the goose here will help you for four days and four nights. And then when its job is done, then another spirit guide will come in. Um, and then if you want more information on the spirit animal guides, um, Blair is the one that does it here. And then he's the one that specializes. So Blair's gift is he's able to see you and then he's able to see the spirits behind you whether it's a unicorn, a fairy, a goose, an eagle, whatever, whatever kind of spirit guide there. And then he has um, a book here that explains everything in there in English, and then he just highlights it for you. So that way you get the paper to go home with. And then that spirit guide there, you know, gives you the, the generalized, you know, reading of why they're there. So with you right now, um, you chose the goose, um, the feather reading, for instance, um, but the goose is the one that chose you for this. So that's why I just gave you that option that there's more than one um, feather out there. But the goose is the one that's calling you the most, the one that's sitting with you right now, the one that wants you to work with him. And then that goose said that um, for giving you the knowledge and for giving you that, that powerful gift that your baby boy is coming in the future, that's where he's saying you have to give him a tobacco offering. And then um, and then learn more about the stories of the, the goose in the traditional uh, stories. And then in a the future, say if your boy, um, you know, dances pow or goes to a ceremony or something like that, you know, he may be drawn to the goose, you know, more than any other bird for a reason. Um, and then, you know, years from now, you could be like, oh, I, I know why you're drawn to the goose is because, you know, situations like this, like with this reading and all that stuff. 
no they don't want to overwhelm you um but they're saying that well they already left um but they're saying here that um you know these are like this is a lot right now that they covered and i just got a photocopy that for you but they're saying here that um the goose had to say what he had to say during this time um the rest of it like i said that you have relatives that passed on that want to come through in a separate reading in a separate time and then they're saying here that um they recommended the card reading as well too so with the card reading depending on which uh, oracle card or tarot card you're going to be drawn to or even playing cards um that's going to be a different spirit guide that's going to guide you so there'll be more than one spirit guide so say for example we're doing an animal spirit guide reading you could have um you know, I'll well, say five cards, for example, you could have five different spirit animals that are helping you through this process. And then they all have a different job for each. Like one can help you with a book, one can help you with family, one can help you with travel, you, you name it. They all have different, um, different um, duties kind of thing. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so we can start when you're ready. So this for this one here, um, again, I'll be writing notes and things mm -hmm. like that. So traditionally, um, the way I was taught is that they always use Earl Grey. Mm -hmm. I use different herbs uh, for different situations, but for this one, we're going to use Earl Grey. Mm -hmm. Now, the tea's going to be kind of hot, so you can let that steep for a bit here. So while this is steeping, I'll explain the process. So. This is just to collect the water and all that. But what you're going to do is you're going to sip your tea um, and then uh, you don't want to burn yourself. But um, when you're ready, you want to put the um, the handle towards you. And then when you just have a little bit of water in there, you want to like swish it around and ask your question in your head, do your own prayer. And then you want to tip it over. And again, you want to face it towards you. So what you want to do is you want to turn it clockwise once. And then once that's done, and then we flip it, and then I start doing the reading, and then I'll start doing the reading on a plate as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So for this reading, um, like I was saying earlier, is that there's there's a grandmother as well here that's sitting with you. Mm -hmm. um, so the grandmother spirit in... Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. So this grandmother that's going to be guiding you, she's the medicine woman out of all the spirit guides. Um, so in English, we just call her uh, grandmother. Um, but she's like the, uh, there's many different grandmothers, but, um, she was, uh, used in many different cultures in, um, Wicca and all that. They call her the crone. Um, and the crone is the, like when a new moon comes, um, like when it was a new moon here, Monday. So yesterday was the last day of the new moon. Yeah, yesterday was the last day of the new moon uh, ceremony. So whenever the new moon comes up, it's always celebrated traditionally in four days and four nights. Um, on a calendar, they say it's only one day because this is a man-made calendar. But traditionally around the world, it was celebrated for four days and four nights. Um, and every moon phase, there's eight moon phases per month. And every moon phase, like the main ones, like the first quarter, the new moon, the last quarter, and the full moon was celebrated for four days and four nights. After that, the smaller moon phases are considered like the male moon phases. They were cons they were uh, celebrated within like a day, two days, three days, you know, or even more than four days, depending on the calendar. But the grandmother spirit, um, the um, she was, um, you know, worked with and worshipped around every month around the four days and four nights. So that's just an example. Um, yeah, and then so in different cultures, she's known by different names. Um, in Wicca, we call her the crone. And then during, in uh, ceremonies, we call her the Natukwadogan, the grandmother spirit. Um, or the medicine woman spirit. That's another name that they gave her. Now, quick question. Who's this old man that's sitting here with you? Um, I'm getting an old man. I'm getting the word farmer. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. white hair, um, and he keeps emphasizing the sides of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then he's sitting here with you. He is on your left side of your body. No, it'd be your right side. Your right side. Um, and he's smiling. He said he's not trying to like scare you, but he's smiling. <laughs> um, and he's a uh, he's he passed on. This old man. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Um, he's asking me to ask you, why did you call him? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> he's saying something about um, a dream. A dream you had, and um, somewhere along the ways, he's describing, he's not really describing the dream, but he's saying somewhere along the ways you felt either insecure, or you felt scared of something, and then you called him without you knowing it even. But somewhere, like, um, he's like an angel, he's like a spirit guide of yours, so when at that moment there, when you are scared, he he came there to protect you, and he's comforting you even now. Mm -hmm. um, and he's he's saying you're worried about the baby, uh, not to worry, but he's saying here that on the, um, like, you know, say this is our physical world here, mm -hmm. so, and there's a spiritual world. So he's saying here there's like fog, you know, in the back here, like he's like sitting here, we'll say here, and you're sitting here physically. And he's saying in the background there's like fog here. Um, and he's saying here that um, some of the answers that you're asking for aren't super clear because he can't answer all of them. But he's saying he's going to try, he's guiding you through the process kind of thing. So he's saying here that, um, you know, other spirit guides will come through, obviously, but it's kind of imagine like fog. Like that's how he's describing it. And he's saying here that, um, okay, this is, a, this is a personal question. He's asking me, why are you scared that... Someone in your family is going to pass away. Oh, my grandmother's in the process of passing. Oh, okay, because he's describing as physical, like somebody going through the physical world and into the spiritual world. And then he's asking, why are you, are you worried about that? Because they're saying that, um, you know, if it does happen, that's creator's choice kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he's saying that that person's going to be okay. Um, that, you know, your loved ones are going to you know, help them through the process kind of thing. Like, I don't wish de death on anybody, but they're saying here that... If it does happen, um, you know, the your like he, your grandmother is already there mm -hmm. to to guide with the process. Um depending on your grandmother's wishes as well too. Because I don't know who she is, but if she's in pain at the moment, she could be, you know, praying for death. Yeah, she could be she is. Okay. Yeah. So he's already there with he's already there and they're already in a process. Mm -hmm. Um and that's why I said that's a really hard question because um, the way he's describing it is that she is going to pass away. Mm -hmm. And he said soon. Um, they're not giving a definite timing, um, but it'll be this year sometime. And he's saying here that, um, and I don't like putting a timing on situations when it comes to life and death, but because um, things can change. And, you know, I always pray for life. I always pray that people get better. But in this case here, he's saying she's not getting better. Um, and her body is very fragile as well too, because he's sort of showing me her hand, and it's like veiny, and it's mm -hmm. like skinny, and it's like frail. Yeah. Um, and he's showing me, that, and it's kind of like he's holding her hand, and um, he's showing me her hand, and she's in a hospital bed, as well. Yeah. Um, and he's showing me has white curly hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then this, oh, this is so cool. So the, uh, it's like as if he, I'm standing beside him. Like he's in my body kind of thing, and as if I'm I'm holding a grandmother's hand, and she's looking at me smiling. And then the other vision he's showing me is I'm standing beside him at the hospital bed, looking at her, and then she's and she can see me. She's smiling. Um. Yeah, and I could feel a lot of grief. I could feel a lot of crying. Um. And then they're mentioning your mom, because I feel like a mom's energy, like you know, heartbroken, and crying. I could feel that as well, too. It's kind of like you understand what's happening with the process, but not everybody in your family is understanding. They're going to take it hard. Yeah. yeah. So there's also a spirit of the eagle that's here. And um, that eagle spirit, it's like imagine a, a bird flapping its wings. Mm -hmm. He's doing that to you to help you heal. Okay, so let's just get this ready. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of hot, so I'm just going to move this here. Okay, so there's not that much tea leaves that came out, but that's fine. So I'll just when you're ready, just sip that. You don't have to hurry through it. I was originally going to use the um, cedar tea, but um, Earl Grey seemed to call out more. And just let me know when you're done sipping it, and then, like I said, just tip it over. Put the handle towards you and then flip it. And think about your questions, think about your prayers and things like that as you're sipping the tea. 
<laughs> Your uh, grandfather is saying he's like, we're fasting. Eh? That's what he's asking. Because <laughs> like, I thought they were going to come in during the process of this. Um, but then it, right away, he just came in right away and just started talking and, you know, letting me know all this stuff. And that's why he's laughing. He's like, we're fasting. Eh? <laughs> it's like he just, right before we started. <laughs> so the handle towards you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and then, then just tip it. Yeah. And then clockwise? Yeah, once. Okay. I'm just going to turn that towards me here, and then we'll start. Okay, so I'm just going to write down points um, of what they're talking about. So they're mentioning here a card or talking about travel right off the hop. Um, now, in, I could tell you have a lot of uh, worries and anxiety because they're talking about here you're also worried about a car crash in the future. You know, that, like say if you're on a road and stuff like that, you have this worry in your head like, you know, I hope we don't crash. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like one thought after another thought and then, you know, you can, you know, anxiety works like that. They're telling you here that there's going to be no car crash. They're saying here that if you're ever worried about the car, you know, swerving on a road or if it's raining or icy or, you know, whatever the conditions are. Call upon the spirit of the horse, and the spirit of the horse is like going to be galloping beside the, um, the vehicle. So that's what I always do. I always call upon the spirit of the horse um, because I've been in more than one accident and uh, over time. And I, when I call upon the spirit of the horse, the spirit of the horse travels with us. So that's something here that's also um, your other spirit guide is the horse. So that would make sense. Um, now I have a personal question. To, are, you, are you close to horses? I grew up like all around them, but I was always really scared of them. Oh, okay, yeah, because they're saying here that you're close to, like the horse is close to you, like mm -hmm. close to your spirit. Um, and then that explains about the farmer, um, you know, earlier. Um, this horse spirit described you as a farm girl kind of thing, so that's why I asked you about that. Um, and then he's also saying here too that, you know, call upon me, like this is a male horse, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, he's saying call upon me when you're scared of, you know, during your travels and things like that. Um, the eagle spirit is going to help you when it comes to the grief, the grief situation. He's already over there, he's saying, like, and there's a hospital bed, your grandmother's there, but the eagle's already, you know, facing towards the, um, the um, hospital bed, and he's with her. And he keeps mentioning nurses. So after the reading is done, um, try and do a follow-up with your family in regards mm -hmm. to your grandmother's health. Um, one spirit guy is saying she doesn't have very long, so, you know, try and spend time with her if you can. Um, or a video call, whichever, however it needs to be done. But um, they're saying here she doesn't have, have much that, not much time, and he keeps mentioning nurses. Something about the nurses are going to say something about maybe the timing, maybe the mm -hmm. situation, something like that. Or maybe a nurse, you're going to be talking to a nurse, you know, something like that along the lines. But this eagle spirit is saying he's standing there, um, you know, uh, flying above, and then he's going to he's gonna be talking to a nurse to send a nurse to you kind of thing. So you have to deal with some kind of female nurse is what he's mentioning. Mm -hmm. Someone that you're going to be talking to um, in, in regards to um, your grandmother and also in regards to the baby because he's saying you're worried about baby. Um, they're saying don't worry about baby. Um, that, you know, the, whoever baby is is going to be fine. But they're saying here that, um, you know, your emphasis is going to be more on you know, your grandmother kind of thing. Okay, you're also given a symbol here. It's almost like a Y, like that. Mm -hmm. um, so in runic, um, the runic uh, symbol is like that, and I can't remember what they call that. I'll have to look that up. I'll just put here. So we'll look that up after this reading, but mm -hmm. um, that represents something too, but I can't remember off my head what that means. Um, you know, and I have a question for you. Are are you at Park Celtic? Yep. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, the reason why I asked that is because in a story we are we have two sets of Celtic runes and the woman who made it, she is Park Celtic. Um, she has a Celtic background and she was describing because I know the runes as Norse runes, mm -hmm. but she was describing that the Celtics had their own runes and they were very similar to the Norse runes. Mm -hmm. I think there was only like two differences in the runes or something like that. She was explaining it. Um, she's not 100% sure, but she's saying here that uh, this rune is what we need to look at after the reading is done. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a, there's a message behind this rune. Um, I can't remember the name of it though, but there's a message behind that, so we'll look that up after. And um, 
Yeah, they mentioned here Celtic as well too, because the Celtic runes is what's calling to you. So that's something that you can, you know, journey into yourself, like start working with the Celtic runes um, and, you know, and connect with that Celtic culture as well too and the Celtic gods and goddesses. Um, and I'm just going to put here uh, Celtic runes because I'm going to forget. Um, is Celtic, are you working with the Celtic gods and goddesses right now? No. Okay. Because that's another thing I could show you after as well, too, because the Celtic runes are, like, here's a shelf, so they're here. Right next to it is, uh, we have the Celtic gods and goddesses in there um, that uh, I never really worked with them before. Like, I last time I worked with them was around teenagers, something like that, around that time, um, like over 30 years ago. So fast forward now, uh, some of my clients, you know, requested that certain candles, certain things are, are dedicated to certain gods and goddesses. And um, the Celtic gods and goddesses are something that was requested as well, too. So I think we have three goddesses now and one or two gods that are Celtic background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in uh, Celtic runes, you know, happen to be right beside them. And then a, a different person made the Celtic runes. So it's really interesting how how that's popping up for you. But they're saying here in regards to traditions and things like that, um, you know, one of your grandmothers that I talked about before, she's asking you here to reconnect with the Celtic tradition again. And that's something that, um, like during, um, with the Celtic uh, gods and goddess candles, it explains about their history and how they looked, you know, when they were alive at one point. Um, and it explains their colors, their certain crystals, certain herbs, you know, things like that. And it's all detailed in that candle. Yeah. So when you have that candle there, what you can do is you could pray to that god or goddess um, for whatever um, reason you need to. There's one of them, a goddess there that takes care of children. I want to say it's Bri, Bri Win, Bri Wan, Bri Wan, something like that. Branwin. Branwin. Um, and I believe it's her, but she takes care of children as well too. So that's something you could work with as that you light that candle, you say a prayer to that god or goddess, um, and then you light that candle and let that candle burn for however it needs to be um, long and then another thing you could do is say this is the candle for example and then uh, stones and, and the herbs that they talk about is you can put those around the base of the candle so that it brings more power to that candle so yeah that's um, that's something that you need to work with huh. we already talked about this before but they're talking about here a, a car seat um, so that's to do with the child as well too. Um, now I got to give you a, a fair warning here. They're saying that when, um, who are, when the baby comes, um, they're saying here, like we discussed that earlier, when the baby comes, your anxiety is going to be a little bit more because you're going to be, you know, even more worried about like, okay, if, if I'm scared already, what about if the baby's in the back, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so your anxiety, just to warn you ahead of time, your anxiety is going to get a little bit higher, but there are certain teas and things like that that can help you with the anxiety. Um, and I was going to write here teas. Uh, teas, crystals, things like that, and then even the candles will help you with that. Um, and you need to work again with the spirit. Of, uh, you need to have a representation of the eagle, like a statue, a picture or something like that. That represents healing for you and your family. And in the spirit of the horse represents travel for you and represents getting rid of that anxiety. Oh, speaking of which, I got to write this down. Uh, Morgan or Morgana. So she is a Celtic god and goddess. So she also represents the new moon on some level. Um, and uh, Morgan um, shows herself as a crow or a raven most of the time. But she actually, when you light the candle, she helps you get rid of anxiety, worries, fears, and doubts. So that's one of them. So that's just for yourself. So mm -hmm. that's the goddess that wants to work with you. Now, in regards to the, um, you know, to the healing, in regards to the um, children, protecting children, things like that, that's what I want to say. It's Branwyn, um, but we'll double check that. Mm -hmm. um, and then she represents the full, the full moon. So there's two goddesses. So you have one that's your, your personal, which is the new moon. So that I talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. And then for the child, is represented as a full moon so it's really cool how that's you know two different moons two different mm -hmm. colors but they work together as one um yeah so it's really cool how they're they keep mentioning going back to the moon with you um 
you know, and as I'm moving this cup, the tea leaves moved again. So this little car seat thing that I seen earlier uh, disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're saying here in three days and three nights, you're going to receive some kind of news. Um, they're saying good news because they're saying don't think it's bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Before I move forward here, um, Morgan, the reason why she's with you right now, working with you, is because I forgot to mention here that she's also, um, not the spirit of death, but when a person was dying, um, she would be like with the death spirit, basically, mm -hmm. and then help that person move on into the spirit world or protect that person's spirit. Um, and then also, um, there are certain spiritual beings that'll, um, like say if it was back in the day, certain spiritual beings, like say if somebody died in the battlefield, certain um, spirits would go and eat the essence of the body. Um, and then that helps the body, you know, naturally rot and go back to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. um, but she's saying here that that's a, her job is that, you know, she's going to be there to help your grandmother move on, um, you know, with your grandfather there as well. Um, and then she's saying here that she also protects the body as well too um, from other natural beings or unnatural beings from you know trying to take over the body or use the body in some way somehow to desecrate the body mm -hmm. so that's one thing that i forgot to mention earlier um and uh oh yeah and then the raven um if you see the raven the raven or the crow that's going to be a sign that um, morgan is there and it's also going to be a sign that your grandmother is there as well too so when she physically passes away, if you see the raven or the crow, like after the funeral or even during the funeral or whichever, that's going to be a sign your grandmother is there watching over you. So that's something that will help comfort you and help comfort the family as well too. So if you find that ravens or crows are hanging around the house or the farm or whichever, um, you know, that's her sign that, you know, I'm here, you know, to comfort you guys as a physical sign that she's around. Yeah. Um, now I had to ask too, who is the person with cancer? That's Stephen. Oh, okay, answer. okay, because yeah. that's where they gave right away. Um, now, in regards to that, he's also saying here too that there's other people in a family, not 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 you so much, but there's other people in a family that are worried about getting cancer. They're worried about mm -hmm. dying of cancer. Yeah. Um, and he's saying here that um, he doesn't see in a future, in the near future, like five years, kind of thing. He doesn't see anybody else dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, you know things could change within a 10 year period and 15 right. period and so forth, but not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So he wants to, um, the family to know that, um, uh, you know, like if they're super worried, they have to change their diet. They have to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, things that are, that could possibly be ca causing cancer in their blood. But he's saying here that, um, you know, definitely he's saying here that it's not going to be anytime soon. He said, we're not going to be, it's kind of like, um, the death spirit told him, that they're not going to be coming for anybody anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just your grandmother they mentioned. Okay. They're saying they have to leave soon, but they're saying, do you have any other questions before they leave? Um, just like, am I going in the right direction? I've been taking a lot of different turns lately, trying to figure out what I want, but I feel like I'm, going the right way or at least I'm going to learn something from where I'm going mm -hmm. they're saying here that you need to go backwards so that's what I mean like you have to go back into your history with the Celtic part of it we discussed mm -hmm. um, the horse spirit is saying he's going to help you have to work with the horses he's going to help you get over that fear mm -hmm. um, because whenever we're scared of a, an animal physically um, you know it could be trauma behind that but it's also is because that spirit animal becomes a protection for us like for me, for instance, I was scared of sharks for years. I was scared of alligators and crocodiles and things like that and snakes for years. Those are some examples. And then um, I ended up seeing and holding those animals in person, like at a fair and things like that. And, um, you know, I ended up going to what they used to have, the petting zoo outside of uh, Lloydminster, but they shut down now. Um, so during that time there, um, it was really cool, my experience, because... Like each animal had a different experience with me, like the snake I was scared of. So I actually had to hold a snake during this picture. And then um, I learned a new spiritual gift that I have is that, um, you know, as I was holding the snake, I had to, like the snake was drugged or whatever, because I was terrified holding this snake. And then it started like constricting around my neck, like physically. And then I started like, I was holding its neck and I started like choking it. And then it looked at me directly and I thought it was going to like bite me in the face. And then it just looked at me directly. And then all of a sudden we had this telepathic communication. 
and he was telling me and then he was saying don't be scared and I said well I'm scared because like I could feel the pressure on my neck mm -hmm. and he was saying here and I said if you choke and so I told this snake if you choke me I'll choke you so we're like we had this um little um understanding so when I let go when he like you know let go kind of thing then I let go of him and then he said that the reason he said that I did that to you is to get your attention and he said that these people drugged me and me and my people and all the other animals that are here were drugged and we were taken away from our homes and all that stuff and he and he was going on and it was a real sad story he was saying here that um and then after they're done with us they kill us you know after the show not, not after show like after a few years or whatever or depending how big they get then they get t killed and he was saying this this is my life this is what i have to go through live my life in captivity and so forth but he said that you you feel like you're in captivity and um he was he was describing up my life a little bit at that moment there and then it was really cool because like these are things i never told anybody and the snake was like reading me basically mm. and then it was talking to me and then i was like then i realized like oh my god like i'm actually talking to a snake like and this is before the whole harry potter movies and stuff <laughs> like that like years after um that Harry Potter movies and the books came out and when I was watching the Harry Potter thing about when he was communicating with the snakes and I was like oh my god I was like I had this gift like you know years ago way before this movie came out and um so all of a sudden this guy's like oh say cheese and then the snake just like looked at the camera and just like it smiled at me like smiled at the camera with me and it was really cool <laughs> it was like this moment we had I lost the picture I should have kept it but it was really cool and then the alligator part um the the first alligator I seen no it was a crocodile it was a baby crocodile and then I was terrified to touch it and stuff and even though it had its snout whatever like um, you know locked up but then as I was like feeling its back and stuff like that and it was so terrified and I remember hearing like this tiny like a little kid's voice like just so terrified and scared like what are all these people and it was like lots of kids whatever mm -hmm. all touching this baby crocodile and he kept saying where's my mom and he was just like terrified that was the first experience the second experience was um. When I went to the petting zoo, it was like in this big clear glass uh, case, whatever. Um, there was this huge um, crocodile was sitting in there, or alligator. And um, even though there was like glass and everything like that, I was still terrified. And then, you know, the rest of the tour group, you know, went forward and went through the door, or whatever. And this is a room full of reptiles. There was a big yellow snake in there. There was that big alligator, and there was turtles and other snakes and things like that. And then, um, I was like looking at this crocodile's eye because it's you know during the everybody during when everyone is there his eyes were closed and as soon as everybody left his eyes opened and he looked at me and I was like you know scared like you know thinking that I'm gonna get eaten or whatever like I had this overwhelming fear and then it started talking to me and his voice was like low and it was like kind of kind of slow like very calming voice and he was talking to me and he was saying why are you scared of me and um, so I explained the same thing, like I was scared of snakes, you know, I got over my fear. I'm fascinated with snakes now. And I said, but um, I'm scared of sharks and I'm scared of, um, you know, getting eaten by an alligator or whatever. And he said, that's not going to happen. And he was explaining, um, I'm your protector. Mm -hmm. And he said that that's why you're having dreams about my people and all that. Because I always have a dream about um, the Saskatchewan River or the Battle River. And in the dream, there's always alligators or crocodiles in the water, but they never bite me. I'm always at the water's edge or I'm about to fall into the water but and then they always open their mouth but then you know they never bite me they're just like you know like greeting me or whatever I even had dreams where I was walking on a water but I was stepping on alligators and all that so I wouldn't fall in the water mm -hmm. it was really cool and as soon as he explained to me he said that we gave you these dreams for a reason he said we're protecting you because there's other things you do not see and then I was like okay so if I'm scared of you what am I not seeing kind of thing <laughs> like so then I started like thinking about it and he said that we see other stuff in a spirit world or even in a natural world and we're the, um we're like the protectors of the water kind of thing and he said in the ocean he said the, the sharks are like dogs they protect us and uh, the rest of the world from what's under the water you know other creatures and things like that and i was like oh and i said i thought you guys like the thing like movies and things like that you know you're, you're always killing people and he said we don't mm -hmm. yeah we're protecting people yeah. Because you humans, you can only see like the physical world, but you don't see the other stuff that's around or other spirits that are around. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting. I was like, oh, so I was like super grateful that, you know, talking to this alligator. Then I realized I'm like by myself and I turned around and I was by myself and then I had to go to the rest of the group. And then there was like <laughs> turtles and chickens and things like that we were looking at. But it was really cool how 
um, the reptile world in that way, you know, I was so scared of them. Um, and then, uh, then I went to Edmonton and I seen sharks like these and uh, West End Edmonton Mall there, these sharks and same thing, they were having discussions and stuff like that. And that's when I realized that I had a telepathic communication with animals mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it was, it was kind of funny because like, I laugh about it now, but I was saying that I was so terrified of even spiders. I was so terrified of you guys and you guys ended up being my spirit guides, mm -hmm. my protectors. And they said that, um, you know, with uh, TV, movies, and things like that, they said that they purposely put the fear in us so that it lowers our vibration. So we do not remember that those animals that we're watching are spirit guides. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it was really interesting how they <laughs> they put it. And then um, there's whole conspiracies about Hollywood and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, for the, for the horse, they're saying here that you need to work with the horse or, you know, go to a horse, whether it's a farm or something like that, you know, and just go and pet the horse, you know, even if you're scared, just go pet it and talk to it and feed it grass, you know, whatever. Um, and tell the horse why you're scared, you know, tell the horse like, you know, like, yeah, you know, you don't want to get kicked in the head or anything like that. Because when we have a irrational fear about an animal, um, you know, obviously say if it's um, an alligator, we're not going to go pet an alligator, like you have to be safe. But when we have a rational fear about a certain animals or even a dog or whatever, it's because in a past life, sometimes we were killed by an animal. Mm -hmm. So say with a horse, maybe you were killed on horseback with an animal, or maybe the, the animal kicked you in the head and you died, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, something along the ways with the, with this, with the horse. So that's what they're saying here that you're, you're scared of the horse. If you want to go further into that and find out why there's a rational fear, then you need a past life reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to write that down here. I'll just put a star. Um, because your anxiety and all that stuff is, um, you know, is is more to do with a past life situation, not the current life. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened in your past life, you're absorbing that into your current life right now, and that's what's holding you back. So that's why you're you're kind of all over the place. Um, you don't know what to, um, you know, what to do, where to go, and stuff like that. Is because you're holding on to the past too much. You're still living in there. Your body's physically in a future, but here's a past, like where you've died in a past life, but you're kind of in between, mm -hmm. and that's where you're stuck. So that's where they said that, you know, you want to move forward definitely into this life and do what you need to do, but you're, you keep going on to the past. You're, that's what I mean. So the, when you get a past life reading, that'll help you, uh, even during your healing, it may pop up during the, um, I think you asked for access bars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. During access bars healing, um, they kind of touch base with that a little bit, not too, too deeply. Um, cause you're, you're mostly going to be under, cause when you go for access bars healing, um, in my experience, when I do the, the healing on people, they fall asleep on a bed. Mm -hmm. Um, so you may fall asleep. You may have an experience where you're triggering past life memories. So that's just a bit of a warning beforehand. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to help you get over some anxieties currently right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and things like that. And then with the car crash, same thing. You may have had a car crash in the past. Mm -hmm. That's why you have that, that anxiety about travel, yeah. you know, and then, you know, with the, with the baby there, maybe you were with a baby, you know, could have been, you were on a baby with the horseback, you had a baby in a vehicle and you guys both crashed, you know, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Um, there's many different scenarios, but we won't know until we actually go into a past life reading and then we go further and in a past life reading, um, then we help heal that process during that time. Right. Thank so, you so much. Yeah.
uh, eight years ago, um, long story short, um, I was on welfare and uh, I was on welfare and I was only making $255 a month on welfare on a reserve on Little Pine First Nation. And I ended up losing everything before that. Um, before that I moved to Little Pine that time, I was in Lloyd Minster. I ended up getting H1N1 um, for the first time, uh, second time, sorry, for the second time. And um, I ended up uh, losing my apartment, losing my job, and losing my schooling. And I ended up moving to Little Pine First Nation and I ended up sleeping on a floor in a laundry room. And um, I remember I had a conversation with God, like a creator, and then... I was wondering why why I lost everything and um in this vision I was given it was like it was like a plate almost like a steel plate or whatever and it said we you you're having like this clean slate now and uh we're going to start you off all over and so I remember having this conversation with spirit and telling him um well don't leave me like you know like I'll do what you ask but just don't leave me and they said we'll never leave you um yeah so i lost everything and then uh one day i was like okay i gotta i have nothing to do here and i need to make money somehow so what i end up doing is um actually should i'm gonna grab that broom it's behind the door mm. i'm gonna show you guys the product that i made that started the business and we go riding on it just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so um this was a product that i made the first time i started the business and uh long story short i ended up making this and i posted this on facebook and it's pretty old now I posted it on Facebook and then a whole bunch of people wanted to buy it and then there was like more than 10 bids on it and I didn't even know what to sell it for. So I decided to keep this one and I started making uh, other um, witch brooms or bazooms they're called and um, the business took off and that was, this is the first time, was Thursday, September 29, 2015. You can put that back. So that was uh, the broom that started the business and um, so when uh, business started taking off, uh, I ended up making over $400 in cash, um, doing deliveries and stuff like that, delivering the brooms all over in Lloydminster and in North Belford area. And uh, so with the money I made, I ended up getting myself certified for Yusui Reiki. Um, and then from there, I ended up um, making uh, more money from other stuff, other arts, and doing trade shows and stuff for the very first time. And then... I kept getting myself certified over and over and over with the money I made. And then um, with the money I made from doing the Reiki and the readings, I ended up just, um, you know, saving up over time and stuff like that and buying more supplies. And um, me and Blair, when Blair joined the business, it was it was about almost a year after something like that, Blair joined the business. And um, then we started doing powwows and doing more trade shows and stuff like that. And we had more products um, than at the time. And we figured out what, what was good, what was, wasn't uh, working for us. And um, so we kept fundraising for almost three years. Yeah, three years we fundraised. And um, we had a dream to open up this store. So we kept telling people like, okay, our next step is we're going to have a storefront in Lloydminster. And I wasn't planning to live in Lloydminster at the time. Um, I thought I was going to be moving back to Saskatoon. So we ended up uh, moving here to Lloydminster, ended up... Um, having enough money to open a storefront and all that and then you know doing all the paperwork and stuff and everything just worked out and um so we you know this is where we are now and uh we never thought that the store would be such a big deal but it became such a big deal to the lgbtq plus community um as well as the two-spirited community and um they got involved, definitely got involved and uh, the missing and murdered um got involved as well too with some events, um, the immigrants that came to Canada, they got involved as well too. So there's a whole bunch of organizations that we work with now. Um, Mental health is one of them, and um, they add a little bit to the to the company um, with services or things that we cannot provide, then they could provide kind of thing. Um, even the RCMP at one point got involved, and they they told us that um, the uh, one day the uh, they said one day we're gonna send our workers to you guys to come and help um, with their mental health and spiritual wellness and so forth and um, so it was really it was really cool in that point so as the business started growing within now the store has been here for four years as the business started growing um, the the name Elf Angels Creations you know spread like wildfire all over the place um, and um, now people want the store in Regina they want it in Saskatoon they want it in North Belford 
uh, Lloyd Minster where possibly we'll be having three locations that's in the works um, it hasn't happened yet but um, that's possibly going to be an idea for Lloyd Minster and area um, the Edmonton wanted a store as well too St. Paul and that was it so six locations they wanted our store there so I said we can't be in six different areas running six different stores so I said that in a future once we have investors and things like that you know that's something we can look forward to and um, you know open up a, lo a store location in each each city kind of thing and um, Calgary as well wanted a store that was the seventh one and they said that you guys are onto something you guys are definitely um, offering a service that's needed um, you know for all these different communities I mentioned and um, you know the the indigenous communities definitely the reserves and things like that and um, yeah so now the company is just growing more and more and more and um, you know it's just like it started all like I said it just started with an idea um, of losing everything first it started with losing everything first and then having nothing sleeping on a floor being on welfare and then having an idea and going through with the idea and then art started it and then posting the art on Facebook and it just like grew from there and then um, like I said everything else just followed through and now we you know that was how many years ago now eight years ago now and now we're here at the storefront going on our fourth year and our next move um, another opportunity that we were given is possibly move to Saskatoon or open up in Saskatoon and run this one at the same time um, so we'll see how that works and uh, yeah Saskatoon really keeps asking for us every year every almost every month they keep saying there's opportunities here for you guys you guys should open up here at multiple locations and stuff like that um, the customers definitely want it and but when we were gonna shut this storefront down the people in Lloyd Minster and surrounding areas begged us not to shut down <laughs> and that was more than one so we said okay well we're gonna stay open again for um, you know until uh, and then if we do have the opportunity to open up a second store we definitely want to do it but we just had to figure out the cost of going back and forth and the scheduling yeah. we're the, um, Canada's first openly two-spirited spiritual store yeah so we didn't think that was a big deal but when we started going to the LGBTQ communities and the two-spirited events and um, and all the other events they said that you guys realize that you're the only openly two-spirited um, couple in Canada that opened up a spiritual store that's offering Native American spiritual services and I said I thought there was other ones like and they said no you guys are the only ones or the first ones anyways so it was really cool like how that came to be and um, you know it's it's a big deal to people to us it's just like an everyday thing but to people it's <laughs> a big deal and um, yeah, we also offer services uh, for the Métis communities as well um, because uh, when people have Indigenous background um, and they don't know their Indigenous background, they don't know the history, the language, you know, so forth. So a lot of times they come to me and they they get a reading done, whether it's Akashic Records or a different type of reading. Um, what's really cool is that a lot of times when I'm doing the reading for the person, even if they don't look Indigenous, even if they look like um, a different cultural background, um, their indigenous ancestors will come forward sometimes on horseback sometimes not but they'll come forward and then they'll speak in their language um, you know a language that has been spoken you know, for hundreds of years they'll speak that language and there'll be another spirit guide that's there to interpret that language into English for me so I can understand what the spirit is saying and then I interpret to that person that's in front of me sometimes the spirit will tell the tribe sometimes they won't a lot of times the spirit will say the tribe in their own traditional language but in English there's no word for it um, so every every person's different but there's other stories where families will deny their indigenous heritage for example so what we found out with uh, sitting with Blair's cousin is that she said that um, your family does have indigenous ancestry but um, the church she didn't say which church but she said that church burnt the records years ago so any record that showed you guys were a part indigenous, um, those records were burnt. And she believes she said that maybe maybe there is some record still being held at, uh, at somewhere in Alberta that you go to and then they have all your records from generations before. And then um, they're a part of it's a church record. Some of it isn't, but it, it basically tells you which um, family member was indigenous at that time and moving forward to where we are now. So that's how she found out she was part indigenous and um, 
she told Blair, like, you guys have to go to this place. I can't remember where it is. We had to talk to her again and um, find out this place and try and see if you guys can have some kind of paper record that shows that um, Blair's part Indigenous. And um, so that's on a, uh, it's on a, it's on a government level. On a spiritual level, though, um, we went through a ceremony and Blair asked in ceremony and um, they said, yes, you are a part of us. And um, he was given a spirit name from that moment on. Mm-hmm. And then from that spirit name, um, there's a certain spirit, I'm not going to say its name, but there's a certain spirit um, that helps Blair with the healing, that helps him with the he- sound healing. So that spirit came in a ceremony and said that I'm giving you a gift and um, the gift is healing people with sound healing. That spirit comes in and heals that person. Yeah. So with Blair's sound healing, it's really interesting because we remove curses and bad luck, um, spirit removal. We did exorcisms with it. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've done with spirit, uh, with um, sound healing that Blair was given. Um, and those are situations that, you know, we only do those situations when we have to, when it's like the last resort kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. What does it mean to be two spirit? So um, without going into details, it's a female spirit and a male spirit being combined together in one body. So as a two-spirited person, um, we're able to look at the feminine side of a, of a situation and the masculine side of a situation. Um, say with couples, say if um, traditionally a two-spirited person would be a counselor, um, the two-spirited person would be a medicine man or medicine woman, um, and uh, they would do naming ceremonies. There's a whole bunch of other things that a two-spirited person does, but basically a long time ago in a tribe, well, say that the tribe, uh, tribes were always put in a circle, like a, a, a circle with teepees, and the middle would always be the chief of the tribe. And on the outside of the tri- of the circle, there was always a medicine man or medicine woman that lived in a bush by themselves. So when a two-spirited child was born, um, they always said they were born special so that the two-spirited child was raised by the medicine man or medicine woman and became the next healer for the for the community and um, the two-spirited child was almost equivalent to to the hierarchy if you if you want to say hierarchy um, so you have the chief you have the medicine man and then a two-spirited person so the two-spirited person was able to sit with the chief was able to sit with the uh, the medicine man and woman any ceremonies that took place the two-spirited person always had to be involved in it um, in the decision makings and all that stuff and um, so for years even to this day a lot of medicine men and medicine women that are straight identifying would be scared of a two-spirited person because a two-spirited person's um, not to sound egotistic but they say a two-spirited person's power is higher and then this is a person that's straight so that a straight person can only go so far but a two-spirited person's energy would be a lot higher because we have both the male and the female aspect. Yeah, yeah so that's that's um, our interpretation of the two-spirited. Um, the other interpretations um, with the Plains Cree anyways is that there's a spirit, again, I'm not going to say its name, but in English we call it a tornado spirit um, is the English term for it. Um, well, one of the, the terms for it. Um, but the, the two-spirited spirit the tornado spirit has a head on this side and a head on this side. So a female head and a male head. So that two-spirited person is able to look at both directions. Um, and then that's one of the interpretations of this spirit. And um, the other interpretation is a tornado spirit, and um, which has a totally different meaning. But that's what a two-spirited, so that spirit there chooses um, a certain mother and a certain father. And then the spirit world decides okay that your child is going to be a two-spirited person but i'm going to look after that two-spirited child so that you know parents conceive a child and a child comes out two-spirited whether it's a male or female gender um and then or even transgendered and then um traditionally that child was like i said was grown up with a, a healer um you know with the parents of course and then um then that child would learn the history of the two-spirited history and the history of their people and, um, you know, have that, like I said, that hierarchy to sit beside the medicine man and medicine woman and to work with the chief uh, in that regard um, with the decision-making. And uh, the two-spirited person, like say, if there was a war happening, the two-spirited person would end up being in that war as well too, you know, and then a lot of times they would survive or say if they, if they got, you know, killed, 
um, then they would have a big honorarium for that two-spirited person. Yeah. And they would tell legends and things like that about that. But when the, Christi when the colonization came, um, especially Christianity, um, they wiped out a lot of those traditions. So now um, a lot of those traditions, are, um, people say they're lost, but they're not. They're just being, re they were forgotten and they're being rediscovered. So now um, as a two-spirited movement, we are recollecting our, our medicines, we're recollecting our traditions and our culture and our songs and our customs. And we're bringing that back um, you know, across the world. Um, especially across Turtle Island, you know, and uh, we're bringing that back to our people. And, um, yeah, they said that um, the two-spirited people, according to some um, prophecies, the two-spirited people will bring the healing back to the, the nations that need it the most. So in every Native community, there's always more than one two-spirited person. Yeah. Almost, every two, almost every family has a two-spirited person, yeah. So that's a big big number. <laughs> so for our community involvement, um, like I said, we're involved at the LGBTQ community in Lloydminster and area here. Um, they want us to, um, with the Two-Spirited community, they also want us to uh, start a non-profit organization within Lloydminster because Edmonton has one. Bonneville doesn't have one as far as I know. Um, it's been development and uh, Lloydminster doesn't have one. So that's us basically. And then North Belford doesn't have one. And I used to run the North Belford Gay Straight Alliance in Sagawa High School and uh, 10 years ago. And then to this day, it's still going strong. Um, and then they also, Saskatoon has a two-spirited um, um, liaison. But within between Saskatoon and Edmonton, there's like nothing for the two-spirited, as a two-spirited non-profit liaison. And um, so we're in the development of that, working with people in Bonneville, working with people in the Battlefords, um, and in Lloydminster, they want us to. So we made a decision. We're like, well, we can't run a business and a store at the same time and run a nonprofit. But when the slow, seasons are slow at the store, that's where we can do the nonprofit. So that's going to be in development. Um, and we'll see how far the government allows us to, to do that in regards um, so that's on a two-spirited, um, that's with the two-spirited community. The uh, missing and murdered co um, community, um, we work with them. So with that, um, there's a reading I do, which is the missing and murdered um, reading, missing person, sorry, missing persons reading that I do. So when a person, when their loved one goes missing or when a loved one gets murdered, worst case scenario, um, the families always come up to me or the mother, mostly, most of the times it's the mothers that come up to me and they ask me like, I need help with this case to please shut this case down or they stop looking for my child, um, you know, my loved one and so forth. So these community members would come to me and they'll say like, can you help me use your gifts to help find this person? So, um, we end up doing a reading and uh, a private reading one-on-one -on -one and, um, with the family or just with the mother. Um, in most cases, it's just with the mother because we're a matriarchal society. And um, yeah, we're, I'm always full of hope when it comes to missing people. A lot of times we'll find them within a matter of days. Sometimes it'll be the next day. Sometimes it'll be two days. Sometimes it'll be four days. Um, but I always tell, try to tell them, I'll, I'll try and do what I can and try and find that location of that person within the four-day period. If it's after four days, we may, we may need ceremony, you know, to... Um, something stronger to to help find that person. Um, the saddest part of those moments, though, is that when we find that the person is found, but they were already murdered. Um, so when situations like that, the police get involved, of course, and uh, but the police need solid evidence. So a lot of times those family members would um, use my ask me to use my gifts and to find evidence for the police so that the police are able to open up the case and then find that the, the, the murderer. Um, for that missing person and sometimes it's more than one murderer and uh, so I've done cases like that before uh, mostly in private um, the RCMP will not use a psychic in a lot of cases so say if I found for instance evidence of a body part or a jacket or you know something like that that can reopen the case um, you know it'd be great if the if they found the murderer right away within a matter of days um, so I try to give as much details as I can 
And then, you know, so the police will say, for example, they'll say, how do you know? And I'm like, oh, because I do readings. And then they'll be like, oh, you're a psychic? I'll be like, yeah. And they say, we cannot use a psychic in this case. And I'm like, okay, I understand that. And I want to, I don't want to be, you know, publicly known as that kind of psychic for my own safety. But I said, can you please go to this place? You know, go to this place. I'll try and give them the description, like say if the jacket's under the ground or whatever. I'll try and give them as much description as possible to them. And then, you know, hopefully they, and sometimes they will send an officer. Um, there was this one instance where this young man was, uh, um, an LGBTQ member was miss missing um, out of Swift Current area. And uh, his brother went to the police and everything. And, uh, you know, they basically they didn't find him find his brother and then they shut the case down and they said it's because he's a gay man so the brother was you know frustrated and uh so the brother went through his old address book and found all his um contacts you know from like years ago or whatever and then found one of my friend one of my client's contacts on there phone my client and explained that um you were friends with my like i had your your name and phone number in this book and my brother is missing and blah 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 so my client ended up um, getting a hold of me and saying, can you do a reading um, for this guy that's frustrated? And um, she told me the whole case or whatever. And um, so as she was, I was on, on a phone with her. And then as she was talking, this, that man that uh, went mis missing, his spirit was standing in front of me instantly. And he kept telling me, tell her, tell her, like, and then I was like trying to ignore the spirit. And he kept like saying, you know, tell her, like, I, I went missing, I got murdered. And, um, so I told her, I said that, um, I hate to say it, but this guy's deceased. Like he's standing in front of me and this is what he's saying. And I don't know who this person is. I don't know any details. And so she was writing it down and then she said, well, let me get off the phone and then phone his brother and then explain, you know, what's what, what, what his, his brother said. And then hopefully his brother will contact you, um, to get the reading done. So what happened is his brother didn't feel comfortable being publicly um, talking to a psychic. So he said that, can you, uh, I'll hire you to talk to the psychic, to write down as much details recorded as much as you can, send it to me, and then I could send it to uh, to the police and then in Swift Current, and hopefully the police will do their job and try and find my brother. So I agreed to that, and then I said, like, you know, I obviously, you know, didn't want to give my name out, whatever, at that time anyways. So I ended up doing the reading there, the cockle shell reading, and I ended up, um, the spirit was giving me a real lot of details, and he was giving me visions, and in this vision, I ended up being in his body when he was alive at that time, and I ended up seeing how the killer looked, ended up seeing how the license plate, um, the make of the vehicle, the color, as much details as I could, um, the locations where, where he was when he was alive, the restaurants, things like that, and, um, so long story short, I gave as much details as I could. And then so there was a vision I was given of a, a jean jacket on a fence post. So, um, and I, I knew the location, like I was describing the location. So with all the information I gave um, the client, she gave it to uh, the client's brother and then the uh, client's brother took it to the police in Swift Current. The police went to investigate. They found that uh, the deceased guy, his jacket. And then they were able, they found that paper inside of it, like, um, I think it was a restaurant or something like that, but they found a piece of uh, matches or something like that. And then they were able to open the case again. And um, then I told them and they, they went, for, they found a vehicle, the make and the model of the vehicle that was stolen. Um, and then by then the killer was already going to BC. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they notified uh, police in BC, police in Alberta and stuff like that. So there was this big search for this guy. Um, and uh the restaurants that i told him like you know this is where he went like on a highway 16 and so forth so they found uh they they the brother actually took a picture of his brother went to those places and asked and they said yeah he was here so it was like really cool so this guy was like didn't believe in psychics or anything he was just like whoever this guy is that you talked to is bang on and he said um so he gave all the details to the police so they opened up the case and all that and then um when I had a vision of the the area in Swift Current where the body will be found, the police went there and they said that we're not going to spend the money and manpower to go and find this supposedly body in the ground. So that body is still there to this day. Um, so the brother, of course, was frustrated and he said that, um, you know, tell the psychic, I said thank you. He gave us a lot of details. The case is open again. 
But unfortunately, the RCMP will not spend manpower or money going on a psychic to find my brother's body. So that was like years ago. So that was the last time I heard. So that's to do with a, a story. One of the stories about the missing and murdered community. Um, the other the other communities we work with is the um, immigrants. So with that story, I was able to have an immigrant um, that was trapped in a different country and then bring him back into Canada where he's able to be with his wife and child. Um, and that was within a three month period. So that's a, a long story short there. Um, so, you know, word went around, of course, of me and uh, and our abilities and the products and so forth, how it helped them. And um, so they started working with us as well too. And um, mental health, um, like I said, that mental health got involved as well too. So we send people to mental health whenever they need it. I got certified that certificate up there above your head. So I got certified through the government with that um, for the mental health first aider. Well, different reserves, um, the residential school survivors as well we work with, um, the Métis societies as well. I'm talking about treaty rights and all that stuff and meeting these different people from all over the world and telling our stories about residential school, they had their own stories. So that system was done throughout different countries around the world, but Canada was the last one. And now, you know, now that it's being discovered, all these different countries are saying, hey, we were in that same system as well, too. Ukraine also had one as well, too. So they were reimbursed recently um, for abuses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so the story can go on and on about that. You know, it's our everyday job to help people. Um, even when we're not working, we're still helping people. <laughs> yeah. So when I was a child... Um, like when I was a child, I was uh, raised by my grandparents and, uh, well, my, I was raised by my parents, sorry. I was raised by my parents and uh, again, um, with the church situation, I, was, I went to Catholic school twice. I remember twice I went to Catholic school and um, my grandfather, my dad's dad, pulled me out of Catholic school and said, I'm going to raise you to do traditional, traditional healing and all that stuff and, uh, and to learn the language and so forth. And so when that time happened there i remember my parents argued about it my dad agreed for me to learn traditional medicines and all that stuff and um so since that day forward my grandfather taught me about the rocks that grew around the area um different plants he didn't know them in english but he knew them in cree um different plants different animals um you know all this stuff like that has to do with nature and ceremony and so forth and um after he died when I was about the age of 13, no, about the age of 11, 12, something like that, he died of cancer and then I had no guidance. Um, so I felt really lost. And uh, so I ended up finding out that I had other grandparents and other grandmothers um, and grandfathers. So I ended up uh, sneaking away um, because at that time with my family was grieving at that time, they didn't want anything to do with tradition anymore. They were angry, there was, um, um, there was a lot of anger issues going on, arguing and things like that. So I want to stay away from it and I want to keep my culture alive and um, from what my grandfather taught me. And um, so I end up sneaking away. I wasn't allowed to see my grandparents or anything. So I end up sneaking away, um, you know, saying I was going for nature walks, but I was actually running away to go see my grandparents. And then I talked to them and then I told them like what was happening at home. And, you know, I never met you guys as a child. Um, and uh, they said that because of colonization and because of grief, they said that your parents are dealing with, you know, the reason why they're arguing and so forth. They they blame that the, they blame culture is what caused the cancer and killed my, my grandfather on some level. And they said, it's not always going to be like that. And um, the fact that you're here and the fact that you want to learn will teach you, you know, and I said, and I said, well, I have no more teachers, like, and they said, we'll teach you. So I ended up um, learning from four different elders, two grandmothers and two grandfathers at that time. And then after that, um, the elders expanded. So there was more elders that I was able to meet, more ceremonies, more healers. And then so they taught me all different kinds of modalities and different kinds of medicines and things like that. And they said, one day we're not going to be here. One day you're going to be one of the only carriers of these medicines and this knowledge. And you have to pass it on to the rest of the people. Um, but be careful who you share your knowledge with because some people will try to use that and then turn it into, to make it evil, basically. Um, 
so they gave me all the warnings and all that and um the um so over the years the i went go from non-traditional teachers like you know i learned reiki the usui reiki uh, modalities and that's like a western style reiki i learned the holy fire reiki that's a japanese style healing i learned the pranic energy healing that's like a indian like east indian style healing um i learned the access bars which we did earlier so that was uh more scientific a little bit on some level um and what else did i learn the oh yeah it's, uh shamanism i learned that through a lady in bc and uh i knew about shamanism on i thought shamanism was to just do with australian magic um but she taught me that that's a part of it and shamanism was like all over the world basically and then she said i'm going to show you the native style of shamanism what she learned throughout throughout it so she taught me as well too she still we still teach each other to this day um and those are on the angel healing angel healing was another one that i learned and um so all these different modalities and that i learned over the years and stuff like that from traditional and non-traditional teachers um that's how i was able to hone my energy and i was able to train myself that whatever whatever i'm dealing with um and whatever cultural background the client is dealing with i was able to be more flexible so i was telling that my client earlier today that um the reason why i've done that is because not everybody will be going to a sweat lodge not everybody will be going to a native healer or a native uh, ceremony um our culture has to to be more flexible our culture has to be more um evolved <coughs> in order for it to survive so the services we offer here in store is um, well the readings. There's many different types of readings. We have over ten different types of readings. Um, we also are healing. Um, so some of them I mentioned as well, uh, energy healing I should say. Um, we offer ceremony when the, when the time comes. So say if a client needs ceremony, we take the client to um, to the reserve basically, or to a certain sacred site, and we do a ceremony with them. Um, depending on the needs we offer the sacred sites field trips so those mm -hmm. are where we go um, we take a basic uh, field trip with our clients and take them to sacred sites like medicine uh, medicine wheels um, we take them to like berry picking um, sacred lakes is a part of it um, sacred praying sites we used to do that um, before and we haven't done that recently um, because of COVID and then we had to take a step back whatever but now that we have to start that again and uh, medicine picking was another service that we offer workshops as well so we have like many different workshops the saskatchewan uh, herbs workshop is one of them where we go into detail about um, we'll say about 13 different plants and we'll talk about uh, traditional and non-traditional uses of this plant and then um, like the cree name of it and the um, english name of it and then that in itself um, we could have up to 10 maybe 30 people on on that um on that uh workshop and um so we've done that in the past and uh yeah so we so we charge in that way um you know to cover the cost whatever and then again people they want like an in-person class and they want to be outside so i said if we do it within the four hour period you know two hours talking about the 13 different plants on a slideshow and then do two hours outside and that way, whatever you guys give us, it covers the cost for us going into like Bonneville or whatever town where we need to go to. Um, and uh, other services we offer is healing. I teach healing as well too. And so teach people from level one to masters um, with the Yusui Reiki and the Holy Fire Reiki and the Angel Practitioners course. And um, there's, so those we also offer. I'm trying to think what else. And we also... Um cleanse house oh yeah that's we, right. we cleanse houses or buildings yeah and paranormal we, activity stuff yeah yeah so we um we do the paranormal consultation for free in person or over the phone and if the person is dealing with like well we'll go to the location um you know and see if it is haunted or whatever is happening and then if they need our services for the uh, house cleansing or you know worst case scenario um exorcism worst case scenario and a lot of times we find too that not everybody but some people they'll ask us to go to a haunted location we go over there and then they're okay with it you know they don't want the spirit to be removed um and other times too we went to locations where a person was possessed and the family was worried or whatever 
um, but we needed that person's permission to do the, um, the healing on that person. So that person who was dealing with the possession, sometimes they would say, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want you guys, I don't want you guys to bother me, basically. Um, so we can't do nothing at that point. So that's where it gets to a discussion where the family gets frustrated and say, like, I want this person to get healed and all that. I know there's a spirit in their body. Um, but we say we can't move forward without their permission. We're not going to, you know, basically tie this person down and do an exorcism on them or anything like we that. We do it through a, a traditional um, use or we do it through a non-traditional use, depending on a client. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like the movies as the exorcisms. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they overdo it. <laughs> so I offer, like, uh, aura reading. So that mean, so that means I can like see co colors around people, or buildings sometimes. Then, and I'll touch like, I'll describe what the color means. And some, sometimes it's hard because of like multiple colors sometimes. <laughs> and then I do. An animal reading where I could see like a spirit animal behind people. The, f the, re the very first gift of that <laughs> was the aura reading. So I was like, where was I working? I was working in Lloyd in the kitchen, in one of the kitchen. Um, and I was like, I was texting Jason, so, you know, I was sneaking texting. <laughs> and I was like, I told Jason, like, why am I seeing, what was, it, what was it, white or blue? Blue, like blue around my hand, like a color blue. I mean, I told you that after, I don't know. And I was like, okay, that's kind of cool and weird. And so that, that was the very first gift. It just just happened instantly by itself. Then the Abel one were at at the park in Lloyd Minster Bud Miller with these, I don't know, I don't, we were with these fre friends and I don't know what we were doing. We were doing something. We were all in a circle. And all of a sudden I seen like a, a, a bear behind someone. Well, not like, not a physical, but like a spear bear. It's like, well, that's cool. It's like, I was like, oh, that's got another gift. Yeah, th that was the second one. And then the th third one is like the sound healing. That's where that one, that one was that one was like, given to me too. So I use like the the sing sing bowls, the sing sing pyramid. Sometimes I'll use a rattle. Sometimes I'll use a feather. Well, my main ones are just the symbols of the Sing Pyramid. What's the most common color you see? Usually like, like orange or red, blue. I forgot to mention too that um, for the community questionnaire, we also work with the Wicca community oh, yeah. and the witchcraft community. That's another big thing. Um, we're the only store in Lloydminster that provides those services mm -hmm. um, and supplies. Um, other, like, we had a lot of people that came in through, from different parts of Canada that would, you know, Google witchcraft store or whatever, and then our store would pop up, and, um, you know, they would travel from, like, five hours away, even longer than that, um, you know, even people from, a lot of people from Ontario would come from Ontario to come to our store here in, Al in uh, Alberta, and then um, they would say, like, you guys have certain things that I need for my practice, and nobody else in Canada provides it. Well, um, in Lloydminster, probably. Yeah, and uh, people in Lloydminster, same thing, but our surrounding Lloydminster, and then they say that we go to different spiritual stores, and they will not talk about anything like that. They won't um, provide anything to do with Wicca or anything like that. They'll provide candles, but they won't say those candles are spell candles, for instance. Um so when we said that, so when we started carrying Wicca supplies and witchcraft supplies, um, you know, business started growing even more in that way. And uh, that's where a lot of people within the Saskatoon area begged us, you know, can you guys come over here? That we really emphasize, well, you could order online, you know, online, like we'll ship it the same day. Um, but I said, like, if you guys take the drive over here, you guys will get more of an experience. You know, you'll come just for one product, but also you're also you'll be getting a reading mm -hmm. or a, a healing or they'll be getting more than one supplies. And it becomes a whole event for them, a whole life-changing event for them. And um, yeah, they're so that, they, so they always mention to us, like, especially if we're feeling down or frustrated and stuff like that because of sales or, you know, the store is too slow or, you know, something. 
Um, and then we, we start to get our doubts, you know, should we have to store, should we sh shut down kind of thing. And every time we think like that, we yeah. always get super busy and then people say like, I'm don't, so glad you guys are yeah. here. And don't close down. Yeah, yeah before they know. leave, <laughs> before they go out the door. <laughs> and then we're like, how do people know? Like, we're just like, you know, overthinking and frustrated at some moments. But people always remind us, don't shut down. And the universe always lets us know like, the reason why you guys are dealing with challenges is because people that, um, for example, we'll say people that do black magic or people that do bad medicine, they would purposely challenge us. Yeah, so that's why I said that like ceremony is so important. That's why we we constantly get ourselves cleansed at least like if we're busy, then we try to do a ceremony at least once a week and get ourselves cleansed through different healers, different elders, psychics, things like that. We go through different healers um, and um, you know, if we're not that busy or if we're like, you know, say we forget whatever, we try to get ourselves cleansed at least once a month. Yeah. And then yeah. we get the store yeah. cleansed and all that. Well, we cleanse it, well, we cleanse yeah. it, we cleanse the store every morning with sage or pa pa Santos or whatever sweet you have. Grass. Sweet grass. Do you have any advice for Indigenous entrepreneurs? Yes, don't give up. <laughs> That's what I was told yeah. and just start, um, when I first started the business, I thought, um, you know, I had to go to school. So I went to business school. I failed twice on it because of accounting. And then the second time I got H1N1 for the second time. And then I couldn't make it to class because I was super highly contagious. And um, long story short, with the um, H1N1, it stopped my heart. And then, um, you know, I had health, heart problems for a bit there. And then I ended up... Um, you know, losing my apartment and my job at the time. And uh, so every, that's what I mean. That's that story where everything just went downhill. And then so when I, um, I was giving up. So when the Lloyd Minster Fair was going on, I happened to be at the Chuck Wagon races there, just sitting there minding my own business. And this guy was sitting beside me, him and his wife. And then um, I just had a feeling, like a strong feeling to talk to these people. So I just like, you know, said, oh, hello, how's it going? Whatever. And then we were just like small chatting and, getting to know each other there and stuff and then he's uh he's the owner of a husky gas station here in lloyd and um so i told him i said i know that gas station you're talking about and he said yeah i own it and i was like oh wow so i was asking like how did he go about his business like and he said he never finished high school he never finished high school he said that a millionaire i don't know who it was told him just start you know you're a smart guy you'll figure it out everything the accounting all that stuff will come through anyways he said just start your business um, it's either you're going to be successful and you'll fail a lot. You'll, you'll, it's like an up and down slope. You'll be successful and then also the next day you could fail, you know, and it's always like that. And he said, but don't give up. And so this guy told me the same thing before I started the business. And, uh, you know, I said, I thought I had to go to uh, school and all that stuff for that. And he said, that's just a money maker. He said, you don't have to, you know, go by what I say. If you want to go back to school, definitely go spend another $10,000 or more. And then maybe at the end you'll be you'll have this big bill and then you have to work for somebody to pay off this this student loan so i followed his advice um you know don't give up definitely um and then just start those are the two main points that he made to me during that that random conversation and so when i did it um like i said everything just took off from there like we thought we needed so many certificates and things like that and then you know, it took a little bit longer with the fundraising part, definitely. Um, like a few years before the store was open. Because we were running before the... Uh, Elf Angels Creations was running before the, uh, the store. And then my, my advice is, for the haters, you'll, you'll always have those. And just do it. How can people be better allies for the 2S LGBTQ plus IA community? Uh, it's a really good question. Um, definitely support, um, definitely um, education, um, you know, because a spectrum, like the main term is too spirited, but there's so, it's just uh, a broad term. For those who've never heard of your store, mm -hmm. what would you tell them about it? I would tell them uh, definitely Google. They could find us on Google, uh, Facebook, all the other um, places. We always tell people like um, come for the experience. If it's not just for one a product, like we always tell people too, like you don't have to come to the store to buy something. Yeah, like you, you can, can just come and visit or just to come chat. say hi or you know whichever. Hmm. Like we don't mind. Um, we'll drop everything and just visit with you and all that. And we had that a lot, like a lot of the regulars, I should say, they just come in and they, you know, just, they just want to feel the energy. 
they just want to stand by the crystals and things like that and, and we're very very careful with energy so say if you bought uh, a product like say for this example like this is going to be a product in the future we're going to carry uh, this is just like an old example but say if you buy this um, at the store and you take it home we, we cleanse it every morning like all the products get cleansed every morning because we don't know who's touching what um, or what kind of energies are coming through the store and, and so forth so we always tell people like when you bring when you take it home please cleanse it yourself you know because we don't want to you know say if somebody is being negative and they go and touch this item and that negative energy goes in there so Blair goes and buys it and brings it home and that negative energy is sitting in his house now so little things like that we're very careful of so we always tell people like if you want to um, just come get us tour just come and sit down for coffee whichever you're more than welcome to yeah. just sit down and vent we had that with friends yeah <laughs> We had people over, um, their house burned down and then they came in and, you know, they didn't buy anything, but they came in and they came and, you know, tell their story and they were crying and all that. And, and you know, we listened and we counseled them and, um, you know, we, we helped as much as we could. And we even did a fundraiser for them to help them get clothing and things like that. Yeah. Homeless people have come here as well too. People are recovering or people say if they were still on a drug or whatever and then and they were hearing voices like all these negative voices and they came into the store and you know we're non-judgmental so we you know we like talked to them gave them coffee or water or whatever um and they felt better and they said that they said that's why i like i never been here before but i heard about the, how you guys are how the service is and even though i'm coming down on this drug i'm a lot calmer now and you guys didn't judge me you guys you know and they, then they tell their story, like, I'm homeless at the moment, you know, I'm sh staying at the women's shelter, men's shelter, whichever. Um, and the energy here, so it's like, I feel healed now. I feel, like, sober, basically. Um, we had people that were negative, like, whether they were abusing women or children, uh, for example. And then they came into the, like, they came to the store, but they wouldn't cross the doorway because we have charms on the doorway, a whole bunch of protection charms. So they would open the door, but they physically wouldn't walk in because they felt uncomfortable right away because that healing energy starts to pull that negative, the crystals and items in a store, it pulls out negative energy out of people. So say if that person like, um, you know, say if, uh, for example, we had a person that was a drug dealer that came in a store here and um, they felt super uncomfortable. You could see it right away there. They went like this, like they were really uncomfortable looking around and then, um, as I was watching them, you know, just saying hello, whatever, talking to them. They were only here for not even five minutes and they wanted to leave. And then so the family members were like, or whoever is there was like, well, that was weird. Why did that person leave? I'm like, oh, it's because of whatever negative energy that's on them. The crystals and all the other products are pulling that negative energy out of that person and then replacing that negative energy with healing energy. So that person, when a person, some people want to hold on to negative energy because they're so used to that all the time. So when that negative energy gets pulled out of them, that sickness and healing energy is taking place, a kinder healing energy, they're not used to that and they feel uncomfortable and they want to leave right away. Some some people feel so uncomfortable um, that they would, you know, physically leave the building and go far away from the store just so they could feel back to normal again and be back in that negative space again. Yeah. Can you explain the logo? Oh yeah. <laughs> So the logo, so years ago, because um, we're into Wicca, um, we end up having the pentacle here in the center, um, the fork and then the medicine wheel over it. Um, so this is a part of a book that I was creating years ago called Native American Wicca. And um, long story short, it was a couple of us that, that followed the Native American Wicca. And then um, one witch that I knew, she ended up becoming, um, she ended up making a whole bunch of symbols that represented the culture and represented wicca at the same time and um so when i i developed my own symbol and uh yeah the colors here represent the medicine wheel so that here the white represents the east the south represents the uh, yellow represents the south the red the, the west the blue the north and then so in the middle here it has the same colors but then i wanted to add some other colors to it so the purple represents the grandmother spirit and the orange represents work or business so I put and then the sides here also represent the the buffalo's tail. It was supposed to be feathers, but when I looked at it after, it kind of looks like a buffalo's tail. So and then after when I was wondering why it turned out like that, like 
like it wasn't it didn't turn out like the way feathers are supposed to look and then i found out after that my grandfather that passed away that i mentioned earlier he named me walking buffalo so that was so i was like oh that's why so when i thought about the symbol when i got home i was like and i showed him this symbol and he said that looks like a buffalo's tail and I said, oh, and I, it kind of resembles like feathers and buffalo's tail. And so I, was, uh, I found it really cool how it all came together. And he said, that's the reason why that vision was stuck in your head. He said, it's because uh, you're a bridge between the old world and the new world. So he said that you've, you've been taught the old ways and then you have to, and you've been taught the English terms and all that stuff. So he said, you're like the bridge in between. So he said that your gift is that um, people that, that live in a modernized world that want to learn culture, you'll be able to bring them back into culture to help them learn their language and things like that. And people that are um, that don't speak English and all that stuff that just know the traditional culture, you're able to help those people when they live in a city. For years so, I lived in a city and we didn't have elders here in a city, like in Saskatoon for instance. I, um, when I, when I needed my services for healing, I had to come up with ways to heal myself because there was no sweat lodges. There was no powwows. There was no nothing. Um, it was a city. And as a recovering addict at that time there, I needed something to help myself. So I had to develop different ways to heal myself. So the sweat lodge became the, um, the crystals was a part of it. Um, the candles became the, um, the element of fire the um the water um instead of going to a lake or river to do my offerings i had to have like a bowl of water to represent that 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 lake or that river to do my offerings um and that helped me with the emotional healing the uh going to forests and things like that like the park was so far away and i didn't have a vehicle so i had to um you know use like a like a fake plant or whatever um or a flower outside or whatever to represent the um the, the earth part of it and the last one, the air part of it, um, you know, we weren't allowed to smudge in a building and stuff like that. And then so I couldn't use incense because of that situation. So I had to find a different way to heal myself using air. So I started just using feathers. And then so the feather became the element of air. So when I put all of those, those elements together, the four elements, and then spirit was the fifth element. So that spirit was the prayer process. So when I had those, when I developed my own rituals, when I had those, um, that uh, tools um, I was able to heal and I was able to get over my addiction and you know help manifest money and things like that that I needed um, and then when I got home back to the reserve everything was provided for me there the ceremonies the elders and all that stuff and then I explained to the elders that you know I felt very lost living in a city like living on a reserve for years and then moving to the city and there was no ceremonies there was no elders there was no support then I end up drinking and I end up doing drugs. And then I said, now that I come home as a recovering addict, you guys are teaching me ceremony, you know, just like where we left off. And I said, I feel super guilty and I feel put down. And they were asked me why. And I said, it's because I went through this darkness. I went, go, I took off and I left the community, went, go drink and started doing drugs, got addicted. Now I'm back home here and you guys are teaching me medicines and all that stuff again and ceremony. And I said, I feel dirty. And they said that feeling a uh, feeling dirty is a colonized conception. They said it's a colonized way. And they said that our people are we, traditionally, we never look at our people as being dirty, whether they're drinking or doing drugs or recovering. Um, they said that in a colonized um, community, they, they look at um, drugs, alcohol, things like that as you being a dirty person. Um, but they said that um, with us, they said creator had to put you in that path. Uh, there was another traditional teaching. I'll do it quickly. But they said here that, um, like say it is a perfect looking feather. So they said that when we lose our path, when we lose our way, you know, we, we end up getting, looking messed up. <laughs> so they said that, they explained it to me. They said that, um, so when we end up, um, you know, going back onto the, the red road, like to the path of recovery and to the path of traditional ways, um, you know, the feather will always find a way to get back to where it needs to look like. So they said that, you know, this represents our journey of life here and our journey in life isn't always going to be perfect. So they mm -hmm. said here that, you know, over time, you know, get messed up because like we're drinking, doing drugs or whatever. Um, all the things were introduced to from the colonization. 
and they said that but ceremony will always bring you back to where you need to be again yeah so they said that's why you're never dirty so it was really cool how they explained it to me like as if i was a feather um and then they said that that's why you came home and they said creator put you in that journey for a reason in that dark darkness because now that you survived that darkness not a lot of people will survive addiction um like suicide can take them um they can get murdered you know so forth but they said now that you survived that your gift now they said is you're able to go in a dark place where that person is sitting in a dark and you're able to bring them back to the light yeah because you're familiar now with that dark place you know what it's like to be there you know what it's like to and they said that's what they said like that bridge story they said you're able to travel between a dark world and a light world they said you're able to do both and that's again that's a part of that two-spirited tradition thank you guys for joining us here at elf angels creations and we just wanted to thank you all for the wonderful support and we're not shy <laughs> <laughs>